want to participate in a Don and Mike show contest? How about this? You or a member of your household can only win once for 60 days. You must comply with any age limitations for each contest. For complete contest rules, send a self-addressed stamp envelope to the mighty WJFK, PO Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thank you, and God bless. Don and Mike, there'll be no Molly Coddling. Will you see if your mom can give my resume to Dennis Phillips? Because if I could get in a Broadway show, then I would have done it all. Film, television, and theater. The only thing left would be radio. That's just for ugly people. Okay. Mike, will you run the air? Hi, God bless you. Hey, how are you? Sorry, you just caught me in the middle of making a nice egg salad. Ooh. Hold on. Egg salad is good. Yeah. I like egg salad. Please. Listen, I, I want to compliment you guys on the show. Uh, tell me, there's a show that I've heard when I was in Washington, D.C. It was a show called Jew to Jew. Uh, do you guys know those guys? It's, it's Dr. Ronald Goldstein and Michael Goodman, attorney at law. They have a similar show to yours. I don't know if you're familiar with it. No, but but I, I like both shows. I think the four of you should get together. To, I'm happy to hear that there's another show like ours. That's great. Jew to the Jew. Now they're it's believers. called Jew to Jew. They're believers. Yeah, well, the, the, the guys, they're hilarious. They're always arguing, and, and uh, before you know it, the, the, the laughter ensues. And... Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, like that. Uh, anyway, yeah. I, I have a question. It's about my sister-in-law. She decided that when her son is born, she doesn't want to have a circumcision. She's afraid that if they remove the foreskin, that they might maybe slip and slice the taint and expand the fart box into the, the ball sack or something like this. I don't know what her problem is, but what could I say to her? Are you born again? Uh, well, the... Uh, Where's your BM detector now? Oh, I like it. I like it. Hey, hey this is great. We're being persecuted by a Jew. Praise the Lord. And he's belching on the radio to show how wonderful he is. Oh, that's great. So you don't, so you don't like Jesus, huh? He's fine. How's your taint? Isn't that great? Okay. Well, good. God bless you, brother. Uh, I love I'll you. praying for you. That was a live phone call of a guy that uh, had nothing yeah. else to do. I had but... a feeling he was going someplace Yeah, me crazy. too. But that's okay. This is Michael Hoffman, and you're listening to Jew to Jew. Stay tuned for your shot at Big Buck. Secret Sound, only on the Don and Mike Show. This episode deals with the inappropriateness of racial invective and contains coarse racial slurs. Your discretion is advised. Everybody loves Donna Mike. Hey, kids, could I talk to you for about 30 seconds? Uh, this is Elvis Presley. I ask you to listen. Now, here's a song. And yes, the rumors are true. They smoke, they drink, they use bad language to mix company. They're extremely rich and they can flash more bling than most posses in this room. Rock stars they are, and God bless them for that. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. There. You've got four minutes to get Fabian here. Well, you'll find out what serious I really am. Oh, and I'm going to believe this thing to say. He asked for Satan. You know, he's not really into ass play. That's just like his sense of humor. What do you think Sabian can do? He can't do anything to stop this. Oh, you are one sick slut. So find Sabian. Do you have any idea how much therapy you people need? Now get me Sabian! It's a young maid. A disease. Silent killer. Hey. There are worse ways to go. Even still, I'm the fish at doom. What do you f***ing humiliate? It's how old was dying. That guy in Hollywood, too. Don something. <laughs> Well, those sort of Simpsons. Now, when was the last time you spoke with him? The last time I had contact with him, I chartered an airplane uh, on June the 4th to fly him into Fort Worth, Texas, where I've been... Fort Worth. I beg your pardon? 19 what? 1993. 19. June the 4th, 1993. He was supposed to get in by midnight, and I waited out at the airport till 1 o'clock in the morning. He had a 
He had white hair. I'm sorry to disillusion. How do you know? I mean, how do you know? If he didn't come in, how do you know what he looked like? Well, he, he because I had I had talked to him uh, when he got on the plane. When I sent him money to get on the plane. Okay. And he had white hair, white beard, an old baseball cap, and a trench coat. And he got in at three o'clock in the morning. And he took off for Skid Row in Fort Worth, Texas. He wanted to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. So that was his idea. When the tumor was dissected into tiny pieces and analyzed, pathologists found it to contain some very bizarre things. A dermoid is an unusual type of tumor. It can contain any type of human tissue. And in fact, this patient had both hair and teeth in portions of this uh, massive tumor. F you, white trash. You have no idea what your work means to me. What does it mean to you? When somebody out there knows what it's like to be in here. even working. That's not good. Now there's the problem. Hello. Hey, we're all in here. We're, we're on the verge of something. Man, that's, that's, that's pretty. a bad wire. That sounds great in FM stereo. <laughs> Come on, please, somebody. Hello. Hey, hi, Mike. Hey, there I am. Welcome. All right, Mike's on number three, so number two is dead. Hey, what mm. happened? There you go. Sorry about that. I mean, what? Well, why do they apologize for it? Not my fault. No, you're not. You're not responsible for that. You know whose fault that is, Mike. <laughs> hey, hey, it's their fault. No. <laughs> All right, now let's do the intro. Here we go. Wow. He was a neo-Nazi with one true <laughs> enemy himself. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at that cable. So what do we have, Mike? Your discretion advised. <laughs> I don't understand why it's not Look working. Look at that. Look at that wire. You know, hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me just stop yeah. this again, because yeah. I'm trying to run the show, hey, and you uh, guys are over there describing what's happened. Hey, you. Yeah. Uh, don't you give me a heart. The microphone <laughs> that Mike uses is connected to a cable, right. which is connected and, to the shin bone. And it looks like a, a bunch of uh, very uh, rabid mice <laughs> yeah. came in over the weekend, and apparently so it chewed, leopard. chewed through the cord. It's amazing. Once, once again, let me just say... Job well done to everybody involved behind the scenes at this radio station for making sure uh -huh. that this show is ready to go on the air 
at 3 o'clock every day. You know, it's always an adventure. Isn't it always an adventure? Yep. Always. Crackling. <laughs> no. I was here on the weekend. I actually cut through the uh, the, the cable. So, so it was you. So, like, what are we supposed to? Oh, no. When, don't don't even come no, in, no. Wendell, because you're going to think I'm getting mad at you. No, 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 mean, no it's not your fault. I think it's the silly string. Silly string. Silly yeah, why were they? Why is there silly string? I think there was because a party today. Because we had the celebration of the fact that uh, uh, yes. Ron and Fez have signed a, a contract that. Uh, got, frankly, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't get it. I like Ron and Fez, and yes. I'm all for their success. Of course. But I don't know why anybody would sign a contract to come in and work from 11 until noon, yes. then go home and come back and work again from 7 to 11 at night. I have no comment. Anyway, it's a gig. I mean, well, I know it's yeah. a gig, but, but it's it's effed up. Either yeah, give course. them the night show. Yeah, like you'd do it. Give them, give them, well, he would. <laughs> yeah, give them the night show. He just gave me a look and said he would. <laughs> give them the night show or give them the midday show. Right. You know, just make your decision of them. You know, how the hell are, are Ron and Fez supposed to uh, to figure out what they're doing in, the, in their new radio station? They're, D, they're DJs here. Mm -hmm. On WJFK, I, they're very funny gentlemen. Yeah, we, we we like them. We're very fond of them. them. They've been put in an unenviable position mm -hmm. of doing a split shift, which in this day and age of radio is unheard of. Yeah, and you know they still got the two to three p.m. hour on this station, where they're still playing the tapes of our old show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, when I was asked about that, I said, "Why not just ask Ron and Fest to come in and work from two to three as well?" Yeah. Good you know. Yeah. But even better. How about you just run Ron and Fez from 11 until 3 and just, just blow out the fake newscaster? Well, why don't you put the, or tape the fake newscaster and put them on at night? Or, something or like. even, or even better, <laughs> yes, even better, because I, I happen to listen to the Baltimore station that we're on Live 105 a lot when I'm mm -hmm. going to the beach and stuff. You know, put the, I, I like, I, I don't know their names, I'm, I, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but I like the guys that are on during the day. On Live 105. Yeah, there you go. Why don't you just run them on this station and, and let Ron and Fez be on at night and, and, you know, run the fake news van like at midnight? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I don't know. Me too. I haven't heard the, even though I haven't heard the guys in uh, Baltimore. I, I, I like them. I, I think they have a, a, a real good show. What like are their them? names? Um, Lenny and Squiggy? One of their names is Bill. That's all I know. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway. Do you like them even more than you like O'Reilly, though? Oh, that's hard. To, you know, Rob, are you talking about Bill O'Reilly on the radio? Are you talking about Bill O'Reilly on TV? Or are you talking about the fantastic bargain that is BillOReilly.com, where you pay oh. to join his website? Wow. He's, I don't know. He's which, a conglomerate. <laughs> I don't know which I like, and I hope... I hope I know Father's Day is coming up. Yeah, oh, Riley on the media. I hope that my my family has ordered me the Bill O'Reilly... Um, what do you call them? Welcome mats? Uh -huh. I, I'm not making this stuff up. They know. Also, the Bill O'Reilly uh, T-shirts mm -hmm. and uh, special for Father's Day, you can order your copy of whatever his latest book is, personally autographed to your dad. Isn't that wonderful? That's Very nice. nice. I, I wouldn't have gotten into all of this today mm -hmm. if the microphones had just worked. Right. I hate silly string. God, I hate silly string. It's too silly. My, don't, my kids love it, but I hate it. Don't, don't hate silly string. No. I'm sorry. You know, I don't want to be a curmudgeon. I don't mind bubbles. I don't like silly string. <laughs> That's where you draw the line. All right, let's... I, I'm not going to restart the whole show. Okay. But let's just take it up from... You know, why is this? We're doing a show and we have to, like, stop it. To restart it because everything's broken every day. Well, you know how, like, with concerts and uh, <laughs> with uh, theatrical productions, uh, they go through and they check everything before the uh, before the show. This Mike is a show. We're technically in show business. Uh, that's no, not, we're not. That's not done here. No. That, that's not done here. Things aren't checked before we go on the air. But we have to assume that the microphones worked. We would have to assume. But, Rob, when, when, ass when you assume, huh? Oh, you make an ass out of you, you and me. me. Okay, so. Now I understand. No, I mean, I really think, seriously, uh, uh, you know, to go through each microphone to do a, <laughs> even though the engineers will tell you you're never supposed to blow into a microphone, no. but you, you do that, go. the wire rips. We've been on the air for ten minutes, and all we've done is discuss this. Here we go. Can we do the, uh, your guys coming in? The men came in, but they we never came in. Hold on. Wendell has just come in. See now, Wendell. This, now this is he. This is how he starts it. He'll come in and, and very innocently. Our engineer, Wendell Hall, 
You go put next, little, sir. Put a little thing on my on my uh, on my piece of plastic in front of me. That's sound checks are for sissies. <laughs> I'm going to now, and Wendell, don't get mad because I'm not writing about you. But I'm going to cross out sissies and write professionals. <laughs> You know when I first found that little uh, thing there? Where? When? Right after Mike got mad because we were having too many sound checks with the band. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Uh, Thanks. Uh, you can't win. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, there's lots of behind the scene dynamic yeah, happening today. So. <laughs> there is that we can't tell you about. Yeah, Wendell used to be my sound guy for the band. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rob, where's that big machine where I can just get in and turn back time? <laughs> oh, like Cher. Yeah. Oh, if, no. If I could turn, turn back. Turn it back. No, I don't want to turn back time. time. Oh, Let's, do it, do it. Oh, no. I'm not going to no, 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 that's, that's that's do the whole, I'm not gonna do the whole open all over again. <laughs> we'll just pick it up from when your guys came in. Right. Well, that'd be the third time now we've played those those guys. Well, I wasn't going to play them again, Mike. I just said we'll pick it up from when they oh, came in. I feel in. about them. Two to three o'clock hour. What? What's that? Okay, so. Ross, be wet. There you go. Wow, and good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Beautiful Sunny Day. Huh? And all the ships at sea. Hey, Tony Love, Don Geronimo, and Mike O'Mara. Yeah. Thank you, Robin. Hello, and thank you for listening to it. I'll say it the worst radio show in the world. The Don and Mike Show. <laughs> We're the worst. Which sucks so bad. We're the worst. Phone number. If the if the phones are working, let me uh Eight seven seven three six five thirty six thirty six from anywhere in America. From Canada. Yeah, I know you hate the Canadians. Boo! Eight hundred six three six one zero six seven. Hey, way to go, Mike. You're welcome. And DC two zero two four three two one zero six seven. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Hi, Buzz. And uh, start by just saying. Uh, yeah. And then you gotta say. Is anyone listening? I don't think so. Hey, what happened? Yeah, I agree. Someone called for a doctor. Yeah, and there you go. That's that's how you do it. That's the uh, that's the open to the show. Uh, may I say happy birthday to Catherine? Uh, my daughter is uh, eight years old today. Yeah, yeah. happy Beautiful birthday, Catherine. We had a birthday uh, party, a little dinner for her last night. She will have another birthday party Saturday, and then another one in a week. She's cool. getting she's getting three of them. And uh, happy birthday to Catherine. Mike, I'm sorry. What is up What's on the roof here? No, here's I'm I'm just now I'm in this thing where I'm looking around and I'm counting the streamers. No, 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 I'm counting. Mm -hmm. There's one, two, three, four, five lights in burn. the studio that, that are out. That are out. Like the lights that give us light here burn, in the studio. Burned out bulbs. Five burned out bulbs. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Happy birthday, uh, Catherine. Happy, happy birthday uh, to, to Catherine. Big number eight for Catherine. Mm -hmm. no, it's, a yes. big, it's a big deal for you and a big deal for her. And congratulations. Yes, very happy um, for her. And she, she had a very good birthday. Good. Yeah. She gets to, went to the Japanese restaurant where she got to ring a gong. That was her choice. That's where she, she wanted to go. Bang it. She had banged a gong. Banged a gong and did bang a gong or did bang Get it on. Get it on. Uh, I uh. <laughs> oh, Rob. I love you, yeah. Uh, Rob got a, a very rare phone call from me, incidentally. On uh, was it Thursday night or Friday? Friday. Where I actually called Rob up, and, and someone should should just get a time capsule with this piece of tape because it was me saying I'm sorry really yeah well I, I think on on Thursday's episode when I was all caught up in this thing with, with my adoptive parents right. at one point I was looking for a tape and Rob had moved so I just turned around and said you are so stupid right and <laughs> you know I didn't mean it and he no. knew that I he knew that I knew that I, right. I didn't mean it but I I had to call him to say we just I was caught up in the moment. Good to say, just caught up in the moment and and didn't mean it. Stupid. <laughs> um, so uh, before we get to the to the weekend, and I got some weekend stuff to get to. Right. What is there a problem with that? Mike? No. 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 <laughs> no. 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 Come on. No. There's no problem at all. Okay. Well, your your body language is indicating 
No, I'm just kind of just positioning myself so that I'm uh, comfortable with this uh, new short microphone. And it's fine. I'm actually uh, very, I'm, I'm very comfortable. You don't look comfortable. Oh, man, that's just uh, <laughs> your imagination <laughs> playing tricks on you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want you to be comfortable. I, I'm always comfortable. <laughs> I'm always comfortable once I get here. You know, really, this is quite a sanctuary. I know you feel the same way. There are, there are many days like today yeah. Yeah. where I consider this place to be qu quite a sanctuary. Amen. And I, I'm, I'm just, I know that on Mondays you have a lot to get off your chest, and I'm refraining because I'm, I'm having another one of those Mondays well, where I'm really, and I don't want to do that because it's not what I do. I'm jolly, I'm happy, and I, I do funny voices, and I'm not talking, I'm going to talk about the lady at the card store. That hold on, me well, off. Listen, before you start, and I'll give right. you plenty of time, Okay. I got to, you know, I, I want to address at least one thing to, to at least close, get some closure here Very good. on something that I started last See, that's week. that's why I wasn't saying anything, because that's probably the source of my my discomfort. What? No, no that I, that I that's why I know you've got a stuff you've got to get off your chest on Monday. That's what we do, and, and that's why I was looking uncomfortable. But some, of it I can, some of it I can wait for. Now, like, you don't need to wait. This like, is not a monumental thing that I'm talking about here. Okay. You sure? Well, it's just top of mind, because it just happened a little while ago, and, <laughs> but I'm fine. I'm fine. I mean, it's a simple question. Do you wrap gifts in the card store? Uh -huh. You know, I would. I would guess the answer is no. No, the answer is yes. Oh, but no. I was made to feel like it was some sort of favor, even though I paid five dollars for one package, ten dollars for the other one, and walked away feeling as though someone was doing me some kind of favor. She said, "Well, you might have to wait and come back later." I said, "Well, how about seven o'clock? That gives you a five-hour window." <laughs> Golly. And it was just too much. And, you know, <laughs> I'm just finding uh, living around here has be become very stressful for me. <laughs> I'm really getting pissed off at people, and it's starting to really... It's just everybody wants, nobody wants to do. You know what I mean? Everybody wants your money, nobody wants to give anything. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> because me, I always, you know me. It's just ridiculous. I'm a glass half full guy, not a glass half empty guy, Mike. Mm -hmm. I know. You know that I understand that. I understand that. <laughs> I'm a, just a lot of my life is I like down. walking on the sunny side of the street. Just a lot of my life is coming down <laughs> to to this this last couple of weeks and uh it's just it's all weighing heavily on me and I, I try not to go off because I'm really really ready to go off. I'm really ready to just go bat ass. Listen, you're going to have to save it because, because today we have Well, and, and if you yeah. want a, a break to just cut loose well, now, why are you putting a microphone I'm not. I'm not. I'm just, I'm fine. I'm doing fine. It's just, I'm using this forum far too often to get things out of my, my system and I shouldn't do that. That's your thing. No, it's your thing, too. <laughs> you know, it's really not all the time. It's once in a blue moon. That's what makes it kind of special. But now it's just, you know, just a lot of stuff. And it's nothing bad. It's just a combination of things. Waiting. I'm waiting for everything. I'm waiting for everything. Things I, I, I'm waiting to sell. Things you, I'm waiting to buy. Are you waiting for Guffman? I'm waiting for Guffman. Okay. I'm waiting for Godot. Gotcha. Oh, but everything, you know what? The most important thing. Like the waiting is the hardest part. <laughs> the most important thing is my daughter had a good birthday celebration yesterday, and she had a good morning this morning. You know, it's kind of tough because she's got her final exams, and it's, uh, you know, it's tough. I, I'd hate to have a birthday when I had to go take a test, and she, she did, and I felt kind of bad about that. I, I had to when I had my final exams. Mm -hmm. Test for VD. <laughs> yeah, when you were... Well, it's 16. <laughs> I passed. Good for you. I'm happy for you. you but how, uh... That's a joke. You had teased a moment ago that you were... you. I know. You, you didn't have BD when you were 16. I had it when I was 18. Much later, yeah. <laughs> you were talking about, like, closure or something, and I'm curious, and I know everybody that heard you last Thursday was oh, curious see, now, whether there's but, closure. But thank you thank you for the setup, but see, you normally don't, <laughs> you normally don't do that. No, I don't set you up at all. No, you don't. I just, you just sort of dive right in. Okay, I'm fine. It's, I, I, it's what, want, the, what it is is they to took my microphone out and I'm no. sitting in a weird position. And I think that's why you're a little freaked out because I'm like at this weird I like, want twisting be, around. I want you to be comfortable. I I am comfortable. I'm just a little frustrated. I'm a little mm -hmm. frustrated with with almost everything right now. Almost everything that's going on of any significance in my life outside of my beautiful children is it, just it's just. It's it's driving me crazy. It's driving me insane. Yeah, but, but other than that, there's who nothing. Who can't relate to yeah. that? Who can't relate to that? Right. You know, it's it's just. Uh, I I hate to keep saying it's here, but it's here. It's because we're all here. There's too many people. 
all doing something at the same time. <laughs> now we're back to last week again with you. What's that? With the thing with... You live in a highly populated area in a major metropolitan city. Even if you live out in the suburbs, even as far out as you... Everybody's everywhere now. Yes. Right? Right. I agree. I mean, I, I complain about it, too, but I, I, I agree. And I, I guess I everybody, everybody this weekend uh, celebrate. Everybody has a child that turned eight <laughs> this weekend, too. I mean, it's just a little odd to go into a store where they, you know, under the guise of the fact that they sell birthday cards and to not only not have the eight, the eights are all gone, but all the envelopes were there, which I always love in a card store. Torture you, yes. But then to go to another card store, and, and apparently card stores are just, they've got more business than they need. They don't need to help you. They don't need to be, you know, they're just, they, they've got everything they That's need. That's why God True. invented Walmart. I want to say that my wife had a birthday over the weekend. And I normally don't buy cards at Toys R Us, but I decided that I would look at Toys R Us because they have, you know, they're selling cards. But you know what? They shouldn't. They should stick to toys because they had none. None. No birthday cards for kids. They had goddaughter. If I'd had a goddaughter, it would have been, you know, I would have been cake. Because they had 50 cards for goddaughters, but they had no, you know, and it was just that one little thing. And you know, you're wound up, man. I've just got a lot going on. But it's trivial because if you, it's trivial because the little things I'm doing, everybody is, everybody has sold a house before. Mm -hmm. Everybody's bought a car before. And, you know, the fact that, uh, I don't have a car or a sold house is, is trivial. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that, uh, that, that I'm just waiting on a bunch of things to happen. It's just, I'm sorry. I'm rambling, aren't I? Do I sound like I'm a, psychi uh, a psychiatric patient? Do, do I sound like maybe this is That's right. This is, this is the big meltdown right now. It's all today. It all came down today. Okay. You know, and then it just culminated when I went to the other card store and I said, Oh, by the way, do you wrap gifts? <laughs> well. Well, now, listen. Who, who am I to say? I, I make my living complaining. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you. That my wife had her birthday on Saturday, forty eighth birthday. Mm -hmm. I got her a card at Walmart. That which incidentally So you think if I went to Walmart I would have been in heaven? Here's the thing. I got a card at Walmart that I'm positive she thinks that I went to like some Hallmark store right. to find because it said exactly what I needed. Mm -hmm. Now they don't wrap it at Walmart, but they got a mile of wrapping paper, of every type of wrapping paper that you could ever want, and they got the the scissors and and all the the, the tape, and we just went home and did it myself. Got got the whole goddamn thing done. Right. Boom. Lickety split. That that's all. I think. So you think Walmart would have would have helped me out? Or in your case, Target. You're a Target guy. Yeah, but I'm you know what? Walmart the toys guy. in Target are not. You know, the, t your Targets and your WalMarts don't. They yes. Do they carry toys? Yes, but they don't carry. The extensive selection that right. would allow me to get something special for my daughter. So that's why. And I, I just was on a lark. I said, hey, cards, too. And I was kind of like, well, two birds with one stone. And then when they didn't have the cards, it was one thing. And then when I went down, this sounds so trivial as it's coming out of my mouth. Uh, people don't care about this. My life is fine. I, I'm great. Everything's everything. You know what? Things could not be better. Everything is everything is very very good. Okay. This lady irritated me. I will get this off my chest. And I will be done with it, and you can proceed. No, go ahead. With what you want to do, whatever you want to yeah. do, I will not set you up. No, don't worry. I will tell you. Here's the deal. They do gift wrapping, okay, at this little card store. They do the gift wrapping, right? So my point is simply this: if they do it, uh -huh. and if I'm paying for it. And they do it that I'm paying for only if I buy the wrapping paper at their store. Then they should do it gladly, as though they shouldn't do it like they're doing me a favor. Because are they doing me a favor if I'm buying the wrapping paper at their store and they're charging me to wrap the? Uh, should they act like they're doing me some sort of no. great maybe, favor? Maybe that's not... what. And it was tiny, but it just pissed me off. Mm -hmm. But again, this is something that I know we've discussed on the show: the general laziness and aloofness. Of everybody that works in any kind of service industry in America. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was not even, she reminded me a little bit of Martha Stewart. Wow. She was a little Martha Stewart-esque. Yeah. And it was like, I walked out and I got into my car and I said, boy, I, I just should have said something. I should have said, you know, excuse me, I'm paying for this, right? I mean, you have it in your little window that you do this. That's why I drop by. I mean, normally I wouldn't do that. But, I mean, I figured, why not give it a shot? And then I got into this whole discussion and at the end of it, and then I said... 
There are two gifts, okay? Two gifts about yay big. What would you say that is? Maybe 18 inches by yeah. by 12 inches? Right. right. And then another one even smaller, like a third of that. Two gifts. And I said, she said, well, you're going to have to come back later. I said, 7 o'clock. And I just didn't think that five effing hours was too much time to wrap two gifts, even if you're short-handed, and it's the week before Father's Day. And I wanted to say, gee, are, are people knocking down the door to buy Father's Day gifts in, in the card store? I'm sorry, I'm melting down. I really am. And this microphone sucks. But other than that, I'm fine. Right. Say something. Cut it out. No, get it out. I'll get it off. No, I feel so much I, better I'm right gonna, now. I'm not going to start. No, because after your well, problems, I, 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 no, no, no. And it's it not, sounds like it's not nothing. From, no, the, the point is, I'm going to start, and then you're going to start. No, I'm so done. I just want you just go I'm ahead. Getting it out of my it's your show, dude. Let it go. It may be on the larger scale of things that there's an awful lot of stuff that I'm responsible for that used to be kind of a joint effort, and I think that is a little frustrating too. That's a little frustrating too. And then I read. That. But anyway, it's uh you know. yeah, you're mad but you're not so mad that you no, can't stop and never say that hi. angry. You can't stop to say hi at a hot Rio who no. just walked down the hall. Always like to say hi. Yeah. But you know you know what I think might help you? It's also been a year, it's pretty much the year anniversary of me being on my own and it's uh mm. you know, we're we're getting along very well, but it's you know, it's over. I know we had this discussion last week that you don't feel comfortable coming in and doing the show like if I'm not here like I wasn't for Friday for Bart's graduation. <laughs> making the case against that, am I? No, no, but have you ever thought about you know we've got this two to three hour. Why don't you just take it and just for an hour don't even take phone calls. Just get on get it all out of your system. Just bitch and moan and complain. I, I mean it's how I've made my living right. for over 30 years now. Right, yeah. Well, you let me do enough of it that I that I get enough and I I think I'm satisfied. I certainly don't want to come in from two to three. <laughs> I think we've established that, haven't we? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, really. You know, I'm very, very, I'm very satisfied with the, the small opportunities I get. It's just that in a nutshell, in any service industry, anything you buy, you shouldn't be made, if you're paying your hard-earned dollars for it, you shouldn't be made to feel as though somebody's doing you a favor. Right. Because they happen to not run their business efficiently enough to have enough staff or whatever the case may be. Did you ever? No, no, wait, no, never mind. But did you? I'm gonna. I've had like eight examples of that today where ever? people are just so they just not helpful. Did you ever just think I'll just buy the wrapping paper, take it to work, and just wrap it myself? Yeah, I, I did. I was actually going to do that today, and uh, you know, I only had to wrap two gifts, and I'm perfectly capable of wrapping a gift. Right. I wanted. You know what it was? I, I like it sometimes when it's done by somebody who does it all the time because it's just that that nice and fancy. I want it to be a little better. I do kind of a crappy job of wrapping of wrapping gifts, and I wanted it uh, a cut above. That was the only reason I did it. I've wrapped plenty of gifts. A, a personal question? Yes. Did you, like, not drink or something this weekend? Why? I'm just wondering. You just a little more wound up than normal. No, I, 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 had, a, uh, I had a Japanese beer last night at dinner. One. See, maybe that. Well, I should have had ten. <laughs> With my daughter's birthday, I should have gotten drunk. No, 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 no. See, no, no. But at some point over the weekend, you normally have. There's stuff that I really that, that you know about that that is so trivial and is so part of my life that that. But it's a it's a laundry list oh, of, of of several things that are going on for me right now that that are all coming together at one time, and it's this. Back and forth, waiting game, waiting on people, relying on people, and it's very frustrating because things are moving very, very slowly in every area, and and I'm just a little frustrated. Other than that, I'm 100% fine. And you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe I need a little toddy. You know, maybe you know Rob manages his alcoholism very well by going home and having you know six or seven. Robbie, I tell you what, and this is highly unprecedented, but I swear to God, I mean it. Go up to the office and make Mike. Just a short one right now. All right. I've We've got, got it up there. Cold emergency Bex in the fridge. That's correct. Love, love Bex? Yes. yes, I would. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Oh. I appreciate that. I think you're just a little overwhelmed by it's a lot of stuff. The events in your life. A lot of stuff going on. It, you know, in general, everything's on target. I'm just, I'm just frustrated. I'm See, just, the thing is, here's, there's a lot of things. You know what? I could come in tomorrow, and literally everything could be where I want it to be. 
You know, or, or I couldn't. Or it could be just another day of no, 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 with nothing happening. You know, there are some major purchases in, involved in my life right now. There are uh, major sales involved in my life right now, and it's just it seems to be going. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So I just want to get stuff done. You know me. I'm like you in that way. I like to get stuff over with. I like to get stuff done, closure, get it completed. I'm done. I'm out. I'm fine. Still wouldn't mind that beer, though. How long till that beer gets here? <laughs> Joe is on it right now. On it. Joe? Uh, why'd you put Joe on it? Well, I have to get the spots ready. There it is. There's another example of it. <laughs> you, know, you don't mind waiting. Guy wants minutes. a cold beer. Guy can't come to work and have a cold beer. <laughs> Oh, how so? Hello. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you sound like you've you been sleeping good? Uh, you sound like you're strung out on coke, man. <laughs> <laughs> strung out on coke. I'm not strung out on anything except music. Don and Mike, hello. <laughs> hello. Yeah, I'm fine. I, I really am. I'm, I'm fine. You sure? Yeah, I'm not nervous or I'm not uptight. I'm just frustrated. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, Don? Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Okay, my friend. I was uh, the guy who hung the sign out at you down in Easton today. Ah, yeah. The guy, the guy hung a sign out for you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, a trucker. A very nice trucker. Mm. Wearing. I, I, I know Mike doesn't like us and, and all that all kind that of stuff. And I just, Listen, I'd love to share this with everybody, but Mike's having a private conversation with Charlie right now. <laughs> Charlie was miscommunicating with me like he always does. He was holding one thing and then pointing at me and staring. What do you have? Is your Are you icing your finger? Yes, I'm icing my finger. I brought you your goddamn beer is what I did. I don't need that. You know, I could I use a little care. support. I, I really could use a little support. On... What night was that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Charlie yeah. came out. And Charlie came out and saw the band. Yeah. Yeah, great turnout. What's wrong with your eye? All right. What do you mean? <laughs> Under here. <laughs> what? The other one. It's what here? Yeah. Puffy and dark. What? It's you puffy and dark. No. But it is it is bruised or it's not I always have raccoon eyes. Not like that. All right, I'll check it. Well, you get bad when I say you have raccoon eyes. I know, but you said it and that's why I said I I'll, t I'll take a look at it. Okay, fine. Ah, I didn't have sunglasses today and the pollen's killing me. That, do I, that's do I look blurry? No, you look fine. Thanks. <laughs> that helped. Wow. This is not a twist off bottle. Oh dear. I don't know how I'm going to open. Oh, Rob to the we rescue. Have an, we have an opener for you, Mike. All right. What does it say that not only do I keep a bottle open and ready, but also a cold emergency beer? All right. There you go. Okay. Here we go. All right. It's a sound of relief right here. Uh, Bowery Bex, Bremen, Germany. Mm. That's good. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm there. I'm fine. <laughs> <sighs> Great. Thank you, Rob. It's so cold. Thank you. Happy Monday, everybody. <laughs> Monday, Monday. Yeah. Hello? Is this Hello? The, is this the dude with the truck? Yeah, man. How you doing? Okay. Hi. I just I, I I just wanted to let you know that you know that uh you know you've provided many good years to a lot of truck drivers in this area of uh good radio. And I know Mike doesn't like us. And um. No, there's nothing wrong with amusing you guys as you're hurtling that my, tons of metal my, down the highway at 90 miles uh, per hour. This, I want to tell you something. This guy was driving a big 18 wheeler today. I was on my way back to Motion City. This guy was driving. Uh, maybe 62. He was not speeding at all. Perfect. I pull up to a light, and uh, he holds up a... Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> well, he's just staring at the beer. No, he's just having a little taste. It's pretty good stuff. Anyway, pull up to the not light. Not skunky in the least. Pull okay. up to the light. The guy holds up a sign that says, Great show. Oh, oh that's good. nice, and I appreciate it. And I got the windows open, and I got the sunroof open, and I gave him the big thumbs up. I said, well, uh, thank you. You know, I said, trucks move America. You hold that sign up with two hands, sir? Uh, I held it up with one, as a matter of fact. You were at a stoplight, Mike. Oh, you were at a stoplight. <laughs> That's right, Mike. I'm sorry. We were at a stoplight. Okay. I did have my seatbelt on, and uh, uh -huh. everything was All right. What do, you, uh, what do you haul, CW? I'm, uh, <laughs> you? I'm hauling advertising for Sears and Roebuck is all I do. Okay. Listen, listen, don't listen One to him. One must be careful with an 18-wheel death machine. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to him. He's just falling apart today. Oh, I know. I mean, I, he's, he's having a hard time with it, and, I, and I've been through the situation that he's going through, and I know how he feels. But uh, just want to let you guys know. Listen. <laughs> listen, thank you very much. I had a pleasure meeting you on the road today. Thanks, Don. Bye -bye. Hey, good things do happen to people coming home from the ocean. There you go. Hey, yeah. Thank you. Bye -bye. <laughs> Put that on the list. Bye-bye. Yeah, you hit the lottery.
I lost cut in Mike's show. How you doing down, Mike? Okay. All right. Hey, Mike, you remind me of that part in Shallow Hal. Cuckoo, 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 cuckoo. You know, I saw Shallow Hal uh, on the guide over the weekend, and I didn't watch it, and I've never watched it. Is that worth watching, Shallow yeah, Hal? I told you. Is that the one with George Costain you were talking to yeah, Pat and Oswald about? Yeah, with, like the, with the dog. We, he's got a dog's... Uh, I'm going to check that out. A dog's... Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Mike? Yes, beautiful. Hey. Um, I can help you out with that frustration, number one. Oh, number two. Baby. Oh, hey, man, I feel like I'm walking into a scene from Kingpin. Now, I want to let you know, I did call when you were very upset around the holidays to try to ask you out, and they wouldn't let me talk to you. They thought I was a guy. Oh, okay. I just hung up on her. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, we give them all a raise. Hello. Hey, Mike. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I've been listening to your downward spiral kind of for about a year now. And I just want to <laughs> make a request that you just break down between 12 and 3 Pacific Standard Time. Like break down totally? Like yeah, sobbing, sobbing, sobbing during the show. <laughs> Thank you. Shut up. <laughs> you. Hello, Don and Mike. Hi, Mike. How you doing? I'm fine. How many grams, uh, grams of carbs are in that beer? Because I know you're on the action side. Now, what? Is it, why does everybody call no, him? He's right. He's right. It's gone. I had two sips. It's done. I won't touch it now. Go get him he's that. Uh, right. Go get him that Michelob. Mike, you gotta have that Michelob Ultra. No, you're absolutely right, and it works. No, no carbs time. in that. Two uh, grams. Trust me. Yeah, I'm fine. That you know that was enough to take the edge off. I'm doing fine. <laughs> God bless you, Mike. God bless you. I'm Thank on you. your Thank side. You know you are, and that's great. And I feel sure. better. That's somebody who really helped today. I feel like somebody really helped me out, and I really... I'm trying to help I know you did, and I'm very... trying to help I me. feel the quant. I'm fine. Everything's fine. We're here. How are you? Well, we have to break. <laughs> then I'd be glad to tell you. I'm, I'm ready to listen. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really ready to now listen. Let's break. Let's take our first break of the day. We'll come right back. This is our... I've just gotten off the phone with uh, Billboard Magazine. They've already called in and said that today has been nominated for the best radio show of the year. Oh, Hallelujah. Wow. Everything from... The, I knew it was hopping. From the equipment breaking today. <laughs> Everything. Uh, hello, Don and Mike show. Mike, I'm a, a big fan, but I wanted to let you know that uh, I find it disturbing that when you have uh, in, in your time of need that you resort to alcohol. Oh, God, These shut are up. signs of... You know. Shut up. Are you a trained therapist? No, sir, but uh, you know, I listen to it. Seriously, why don't you paint my taint? <laughs> <laughs> we all need a timeout right now. <laughs> I was saying that, and then, then we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Is back. Microphone's back. I'm in my uh, my traditional reclining position. I I feel much better. Good. That's very important to me. <laughs> Everything's fine. Good. We well, got some news during the break, which is uh, you know fine. Well, now what was it? What news? Yeah, the thing I was talking to you about earlier in the office. Which thing? Oh. The yeah yeah yeah. 
Is she, is she giving the finger? <laughs> so it was. Well, they, no, nobody knows. Oh, I think there. I think there are people listening. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're a complicated man. Well, you know that's you. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you in code? Yeah. Right. That they. they, they yeah. Yeah. They, uh, right. They, they did their. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. So. So that's that. Well, how? <laughs> Write it down, huh. if you don't mind. Sorry, we're doing a show in code today. I'm sorry, Mike's yeah. having a it's business to take care of. I'm going to give you. Okay, I you don't even have to tell me what you're writing down. Price. I understand. Okay. Is that what? That, that's that's price. Right. right. Okay, I'm going to give you offer. Now is that then what they originally? No, no. Counter. Oh, okay. So okay. That's what you counter with. What do they counter with? <laughs> well, so you counter again. That's how the game is played. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's yeah. selling a house. Keep, keep playing. <laughs> okay. That's, I, even I know that. I'm a dumb guy. Right. That so you just, you counter back. Yeah, I know. But let it go for four. I will. I am. This is going to be my little sanctuary. Welcome. Try to let it go. I'm fine. And, and who am I to say? Who am I to say? I, everything bothers me all the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're allowed. Absolutely. You're allowed. Take your day. Here, here. Anything else? Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm good. You sure? <laughs> no, I'm fine. But no, I mean, I don't doubt that you're fine, but I just... Anything else? <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's too heavy to mention. It's, it's way too heavy to mention, so I'm not going to get into it. Well, what is and that's a factor too. You made him curious. You know, a very good friend of mine died, and I'm very bummed about that too. So I mean, you know, that's it. So other than that, I'm fine. Okay. You know, so so everything will everything will be very fine. Gotcha. I'm fine. Okay. It's been a day. It's been it's Monday, Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so now go ahead. No, no, no. Why are you? No. Why why you think there's more and there's not? There's really not anything more. I know you pretty good. Yeah. And I think that there's more bubbling under the surface. No, there's really not. There's really not. And I know we can just hang up on all these calls right now, Joe, because these calls will not help. No, it's people poking fun. Yes. You're good. But I'm not in any great misery. I, I was just, in fact, I was just on the phone with my ex, and she said, you're funny. You know, so, I mean, it's, it's lighthearted. It's, nice. it's nothing really... Uh, it's nothing really bad. She's probably la she's probably enjoying your pain. No, of course not. No. Laura, you're not enjoying my pain, I hope. No, I hope you're not. I mean, she's probably having a beer right now. I hope. Nah, she doesn't drink. Well, maybe it's special occasion. She used to, when we were together, she used to drink just because she felt like she had to. <laughs> maybe she's having a, we all an O'Doul's now. <laughs> a a non-alcoholic beer. No, she's probably drinking that uh, that water with the uh, vitamin C in it or whatever. You know, that energy water. That's mm -hmm. what that, that okay. stuff that Charlie drinks. Hey, listen, Joe, I was serious when I said clear the lines out. Because Mike doesn't need to know if his prostate is okay. <laughs> Mike doesn't need to know that you think he's whining. Mike doesn't need no, to know. No, that one would, that would make my, that would piss Mike me doesn't off. need to know that someone thinks he needs therapy. Uh -huh. Well, I've been there, done Mike that. needs to go back on Paxil. No listen, way. Listen, he's having a day. Yes, okay. I'm entitled. Yeah. Let him have a day. And really, it's not quite that bad. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't. It is a new well, Hey, it's sunny. It's sunny out. Yeah. Yes, it is. Happy no Monday. No rain. Yes, it is. No rain. No rain today. It's going to be nice tomorrow. Then it's going to rain for another five days in a right. row through the weekend. At least that's what I've heard already. <laughs> so, uh, let me see now. Uh, boy, when we last left you, you were having no, a day. I'm, I'm figuring out the clock. I'm figuring out how not to. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I can do this and then do that, which will segue right into. And I mean it when I ask you, other. how are you? How yeah, are, and how I'm going to tell you what I'm doing now is trying to figure out. I want to briefly discuss the resolution with with Francis. Then I want to discuss my, my son's graduation and yeah. some things that happened and some nutty stuff that happened to me on the weekend. I want to talk to my wife about her her birthday, and that will segue into Lisa. Herndon's bridal shower, oh, yes. of which my wife and Robbie's wife and Buzz's wife went to, mm -hmm. that included trivia about Charles Broyhill. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I have the questions today. My wife was okay. telling me this stuff this weekend, and I was just absolutely going number one in my pants, <laughs> laughing at, yeah. at, at the depth of Charles Broyhill. Right. Every, I mean, everything besides his favorite color, 
his favorite place to be, his favorite food, what he loves best about Lisa, mm -hmm. what he would like to change about Lisa. Wow. All of these things, very interesting for, yeah. uh, for a young man. And we've got all this information? Yep. That he's getting married in uh, something like three weeks. That's going to be terrific. So, listen, uh, Thursday, and I apologize, I had a meltdown Thursday, again, about my friggin' parents, and I was able to come to a resolution... Um, with this. Good. Uh, I told you I, I received this letter from Francis on Thursday. Right. That said, you know, ooh, Brian, Michael, and I've got, you know, I've, I've got plenty more proof. So we got, got done with the show and uh, I'm going to the mall to pick up my, my new suit for my kid's graduation, which was on Friday. And I just thought, I'm just going to get it out in the open with this, with this broad once and for all. I call her up and I say, Hello, Francis. It's me. She says, what can I do for you? I said, I read your letter on the air today. And I really, Mike, Mike you think you, you lost it or you didn't lose it or you were going through something right there? Right. You should have heard me. I don't think that I've ever screamed as much or as loudly as I did when I was speaking with yeah, I'm not going to call her my mother anymore because she's not my mother. But with the woman who raised me for for 16 years, I am absolutely not going to refer to her as mother anymore. For most of our conversation, I referred to her as bitch. I said, listen, bitch, you sent me a letter to work to try to flip me out. Congratulations, you flipped me out. Now, in your letter... You you are inferring that there's some grand secret about somebody named Brian Michael. I talked about it on my radio show today with my wife. No secrets from her, no secrets from our listeners. If you are inferring that I have a child that I don't know about, please tell me. And as it turns out, that was <laughs> a bluff. Mm -hmm. She got nothing. Mm -hmm. She's got She's got nothing. I yeah. said, so we got past that. I said, okay, bitch. So, you try to screw with my head on that. Then you write, you have other stuff on me. What do you got? Bring it on, because I'm tired of you playing these games with me. I mean, I was really screaming at her, and I was saying stuff like, if you want to if you wanna fight with me, I'm going to fight with you, and I want to tell you something. I'm meaner, I'm nastier, I'm tougher. I will absolutely stomp on you until you are absolutely laying on the ground begging my forgiveness. And I said, and I'm not speaking physically, I am speaking mentally. You want to F with me, I'm going to F with you. Mm -hmm. Now, bitch, I keep in mind, this has been bottled in for, I'm 44 has been bottled in. I said, what do you got? Because all you want to do is try to F with my life the way you F with my brother's life. You got something on me and that's that's the only reason that you've contacted me now. What do you got? And she said, Well what about when you were in Providence nineteen seventy eight and seven? Mm -hmm. What about when you were in Providence and you had that car repossessed? <laughs> I said <laughs> Oh wow. You think that that's a gigantic state secret? Call the Washington Post and tell them I had a car repossessed. I've said that on the radio. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the bankruptcy? I said, I've said on the air, it's common knowledge. You talked about your past. That, that yeah. I was bankrupt at one point. Sure did. Happens to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So she kept going after that. She wouldn't stop. She said, I remember one time when you were living in Indianapolis, when you bounced a rent check. I said, oh, wow. sad. and I'm yeah. saying, listen, and I'm not saying it, I'm screaming it. Yeah. Listen, bitch, you've got nothing. You're old. You're pathetic. I don't want any contact with you. I tried to be civil with you on, on whenever it was last Monday or over the week, whenever it was when I originally talked to you when you sent me the, the letter saying that Sam's in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I asked you at that time, do you want me to come down there? And you said no. So exactly now, when you send me a threatening letter to work indicating that you have some type of secret about me that you're going to reveal, and really you don't have anything, 
bitch. What do you want from me? And here's what she said. I want you to call your father, who's not my father, and that's been pointed out to me by both of them many times. Right. I want you to call him and apologize. I said, apologize for what? Apologize for being such a disappointment. <laughs> wow. And, I, and it was at that point that I just said, listen, first off, you're mailing me through the, through the United States mail. Everything that I have said on the radio about you and about what's happened between us is the absolute gospel. You've got nothing on me. I want nothing more than for you to stay out of my life. I've requested that. I had to send a, a, a letter from a lawyer. I, I said to her, at what point do you think it might be you, that you have two kids who come from totally different backgrounds, and I want nothing to do with you because you're so screwed up, and your other son had to get a restraining order. She said, well, now you don't know all about that. When we were in court for that, and I said, stop right there, you crazy bitch. You were in court because your other son had to get a restraining order against you. I said, just stop it. So finally, I said to her, here's what we're going to do. And I got, a, I got a tape recorder. So I'm going to tape this phone call. So I hook up that little, uh, little portable tape thing to my, to my, to the output of my cell phone. I said, I'm recording this now. Are we in agreement that we want nothing to do with each other ever again? Nothing would make me happier. You're a mean, awful person. I never knew. I said, listen, bitch, just stop with how bad I am and, and just, let's get to the facts. Today is, Thursday, June 5th, whatever the day was, it's 7.20 p.m. I agree that I will never contact you again in any way. Do you agree that you will do the same? Yes. I said, say it. Say it, bitch. Then she said it. And I said, now say your name. And she said her name. And I said, now say the time. And she said the time. And I said, good, what we have now is a binding verbal contract which I have on tape, and I do have it on tape. And I said, now goodbye forever. Goodbye forever. After all we did for you. I said, oh, do you really want to start this whole long diatribe again after all you did for me? All you can come up with is the fact that when I, when I was in financial straits a couple of times, you bailed me out, and we paid you back. Because Fred and I went back through and looked at our records and looked at and saw that we paid you back every dime that you claimed we owed you. And now all you can do, rather than reach out and say, maybe we've had some problems, let's try to, to, you know, to, to just make it water under the bridge and try to make the last couple of years you have on this earth pleasant. Now, instead of that, all you can do is threaten me. And I've had it. I've just, had, I, I've been waiting. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long to take the gloves off and just tell her all of this. And I felt like Tony Soprano yelling about his mother. So I'm sitting in the parking lot in front of uh, whatever the, the store is at the mall, and I'm just screaming into the telephone, You terrible bitch. You have no idea who you're effing with. You are effing with someone who is so torn up inside about what you've done that I would do anything to get revenge. I mean, I was really... She said, I can't believe I'm hearing this from you. Mm -hmm. I said, believe it, bitch. Believe it, this is what you've done to me. You've driven me crazy. Now, live, die. I don't care. Leave me alone. And that's wow. how it ended. Well, it sounds like that's closure. When she hung up. So I believe that would be uh, the end of that. And I, so. I don't think we're going to have to... Uh... <laughs> I grew up. <laughs> Man. Wow. So the whole thing... And the reason that I had the reaction that I did on, on Thursday... I've not gone deep in depth with you guys on this, but when I was growing up, like when I was going through uh, the stuff in Providence and making $75 a week and 
spending beyond my means and having my car repossessed. Well, my mom and dad would help me out of those situations, but they would also like, write letters to my boss. You know, the same crap they pull with my brother. Oh, and you don't know how embarrassing it is when, first off, you're out there, you're on your own, you're trying to to make it, and, and you're not making it, and it's nobody's fault but my own. I was effing up. And they would help me out, but then to balance helping me out, <laughs> they're hell lying to my boss. Ouch. You know, Gary Berkowitz getting in the le a letter in the mail from my mother. Yeah, pretty crazy. You know, I got to get called into the PD's office, and he says, well, I got a, I got a letter here from your mom. Says that you're you're in trouble with your Sears credit card. Wow. So, wow. I the reason I had the reaction I did last week was that all of those memories came flooding back. Sure. That she thinks she can still push the same buttons with me and get the same reaction. She can still manipulate me the same way. Sure. And, and the truth is, she can't. And I I do pray for them. I I pray that. Well, first I pray and never see or hear from them again. But that in some weird way they find happiness yeah. because they are too. Very old, very mean-spirited, very uncompassionate people who are compulsive liars. Mm -hmm. And the, the main people that they lie to are themselves. Mm -hmm. they, one gets the other going, and that's, that's how they make it happen. And I, I never thought I could be that mean. You know, despite what you hear on the radio, I'm really, really not like that in real life. I, I, on the radio, you can say anything, and it's a show. And, right. I, and frankly, I don't care what, what you people think because I'm doing a show. And if right. you think I'm a jerk, yeah, I don't care. You're listening. You're giving us ratings. That's all I care about. I go home at the end of the day and go, ah, that's a show. They don't know the real me. Well, this was the real me. And it was. The, I have never lost it with any human being to the extent that I lost it with her. Just screaming into the phone. Listen, bitch. Listen, you stupid, hateful bitch. And she, God bless her, she stood in there yeah. battling me out, you know, with her, with her measured, grandma-ish-like voice, mm -hmm. you know, to the very end. You're just the goose that laid the golden egg. That's all you are. You're a disappointment. Call your father and tell him you're di you're a disappointment. Wow. It's, and I said that's pretty ill. And I, and I said and the way. So you want me to call? Think of him. it. Uh, you know, if she if she has to think about anything, she should think about a mother saying that to a son. Mm -hmm. You want more? As she would tell you, she's not my mother. Uh, she, she wants me to call my adopted father to tell him I'm sorry that our relationship has gone poorly. Mm -hmm. The means to the end of her getting that is to send me a letter blackmailing him to work mm -hmm. saying you know, making up stuff and then when I finally pin her down on exactly what it is, it's where you bounce to check. Right. Wow. Well you had so a car blackmailing you with with uh, a fictitious name. I mean a name that means nothing. Yeah, a a it, bluff. And then bringing up stuff that was 20 years ago that you've already talked about. I, I said to her, if you're talking about a child, who's the mother? And I'd be willing to take a blood test at any time. But it seems to me that if I had a child out there, especially now based on the fact they've been married 22 years coming up, this child would be 23 or 24. Mm -hmm. Don't you think I would have heard something from the mother? You would think. At some point? Well... She's nuts. She's just freaking nuts. And I think it's over now, probably. Hope so. I think so. I think so. Um, I don't know what I can do legally. I mean, I mean, I can't stop her from writing me or trying to contact me. Right, right. But I do know that she does listen to the show. And I do know that she gets, if she, if she doesn't get it where she lives, it's close enough where someone relays it or somebody mm -hmm. calls her up. So just know this again, Francis that everything that I've said today is true. Even the bad stuff that I'm saying about me, that I yelled at you and called you a bitch and told you that you're heartless and that you're cruel, all of that stuff, I said it. I'll, I'll take whatever responsibility there is for it. But I did mean this. Just leave me the F alone. Because what you don't know is that every time I get in a situation and I meet people, they ask me 
where my parents live, I tell them my parents are dead. And that's true because, A, I don't know who my real parents are. And second, you two old pathetic losers are both dead to me. So why don't we make this work for all of us and let me be dead to you as well? And just leave me the F alone. I want you to call him and apologize. For what? For being a bad son. Wow. For being a disappointment. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'd be glad to. After the letter you sent me on Friday. Crazy bitch. You absolutely crazy. So did she hang up at the end? Yeah, she hung up on me. And I didn't didn't call her back because right. I got the I got the thing on tape. And uh, you know, then I'm thinking, oh God, I you know, I messed up the show because I've talked about this like for for two days, and people think you know who's going to listen to this, and I, I shouldn't talk about it on the show, and I got to focus on my kid's graduation, and I got the, my wife's birthday coming up, yeah. but I was able to eh, put it behind me. I think I put it behind me now. Great. And that's that, you uh, seem as though you have freed yourself of that a little bit. Yeah, well, a lot that was of not the case on Thursday. No, a lot of that stuff, you know, as 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 mean-spirited and as cruel as they have been to me, whether they've meant it or not, I've never taken the gloves off with them. I've never taken the gloves off. And I still haven't taken the gloves off 100%. Right. I still have. Well, it's sad in a way. It right. is pathetic. It really is. And uh, hopefully the message was delivered. Uh, I'd venture to say your brother probably has never confronted them the way you did. No, and my brother, as I mentioned, has to hide. Yeah. Because he doesn't want them... Well, because he doesn't. he's not in the financial position where he can, you know, really stand up for himself. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's living with someone and living under, you know, mail goes to a P.O. box and the phone is to a, a different person's name. Right. The reason being so that these crazy people don't try to track him down and ruin his life, too. Right. You know, just because they're... And, and the nuttiest part, and this will be my final words on this topic, so everybody out there is sick of this, you can be very happy to know this is my final word. And I brought this up to her. Don't you think you're a little bit crazy when I meet people who I haven't seen for 20 or 30 years who you've seen recently, and they say to me, hey, we saw your mom and dad, and they're so proud of your success, and they think Bart's a wonderful guy, and... <laughs> Frida's great. That's weird. It's like, you know, mm. cuckoo, mm -hmm. nutty, lying to yourself, lying to others. Why not tell people the truth? My brother and I were adopted. When we found out we were adopted, we came to you and we said, we'll love you as our own parents. Please tell us the truth. You couldn't handle it. And you flipped out. You lost it. And you said things that you can never take back again. I give it genetically, we're not your kids. We're bad seeds. That's why nobody wanted us. They were two little boys. You were two little boys that nobody wanted. You should be glad that we took you in and gave you a home. Christ, I would have rather have lived in an orphanage the rest of my life. Amen. But I'll tell you this, you dumb bitch. The one thing you did give me was ambition. And for that, I thank you, because you gave me the ambition to get the F out of your house. Why do you think I moved out when I was 16? It wasn't so much because I loved radio, which I do, and I was glad to, to get a job. I had to get the F away from that. Yeah. I just had to get out of there. <laughs> so anyway, they're nuts. And F you. <laughs> you crazy bitch. <laughs> Seriously. I wouldn't wish that on Jack Diamond. I wow. really wouldn't. Right, now that's saying something. Yeah, wow. I wouldn't wish that on him. So I got past all of that and Good. got home Thursday night and did what I shouldn't do. had to mix myself with nice... Big drink and just sat in my room and kind of stewed about it. And, you know, my wife, who's great, came in and said, what's wrong? And I just pretty much said, leave me alone, mm -hmm. and I, which was the wrong play because she just wants to help. And right. I just said, you, yeah, you'll, she's you, affected by it. You know, you'll never understand it. You'll never get, you know, you got a family. I don't got a family. I don't know. So it wasn't the woe was me. And I snapped out of it, though, on Friday uh, for my kids' uh, graduation and uh, had some wonderful... Um, Road rage. <laughs> I'll tell you about this weekend and uh, oh dear, had a had a birthday thing for my wife because her birthday was Saturday and I didn't want this whole thing with my family to f up her birthday and uh, and you were attacked by a trash can. Yeah, I'll tell you that too. I'm not, I'm not proud of that. That's that's like something from really from America's most moronic home videos. Thank God nobody was watching. But anyway, thank you for listening. This hopefully will be the end 
of this saga now. Right. That, uh, you know, she's she's played all of her cards now. They're all played, and, you know, goodbye. See ya. And then the only other thought that I had was, well, you know what I should do? I should, I should change my name. This was something I was thinking, really, that, you know, I'm going to change my name. But once again, my wife, who has got a lot going, she said, uh, well, now, why would you do that? Because because our son associates that name with you. Mm -hmm. And our son thinks, you know, you're a great guy. And, and I think you're a great guy. And just because you think the, the name means everything bad doesn't mean that the rest of us do so you uh, you for your son put a positive on yeah, the name yeah. and i think that is your name and not their name so that's where frida's great where she says like you know let's just stop this feeling sorry for yourself you you finally told her to f off you finally t you told her everything you wanted now you know just just deal with it it's, mm -hmm. it's your name think about you know Think about somebody beside yourself for once. Right. And then, oh, geez, that, now that's a novel idea. <laughs> but and it would ever, be the first time I've ever thought about anybody but myself. But if you ever do, you know, want to change it, I, I there's one I've always thought would be good. Go. Mike Chesapeake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep it. Oh, but anyway, that's the uh, that's the upshot with those two. So, uh, you know, there's, there's no kids. There's no threats. There's no nothing. It's just an old... Pathetic broad. We should just dig a hole and die today. Bitch. You bitch. <laughs> the people. And the people that were coming into the mall. Had the we're hearing open. that. I had the sunroof open. Oh my I was God. getting looks. Because, I mean, I was beyond out of my mind screaming into the phone like, D I don't want to do it now because I'm afraid I'll blow my voice out. But I'm screaming into the phone, you know, do you hear me, bitch? Listen, bitch, you have no idea who you're effing with, bitch. Re refer to me as sir. You will answer to the name of bitch. Mother bitch. I mean, it was nuts. You got it out of your system. Yeah, I did. did. Many years worth. There you go. All done. So. Well, good for you. I yeah. feel better. Good for you. Yeah. I know what you've been through. And, you feel and better? I do feel better. Good. That's that we right. could that we could move on. I got some happy stuff about the weekend. I got some stuff that was stupid that'll <laughs> amuse you. And what a moron I am. And uh, then we'll dive into this stuff with uh, Frida and Charlie. Ah. And uh, you mean, you mean, Lisa, I mean, uh, uh, Lisa, well, yeah, I'd like uh, to hear that both too. of our greatest fears yeah. come to the forefront. <laughs> oh, yes. I used to say <laughs> Laura and Charlie all the time. Frida went to Lisa's bridal shower. Right. She's marrying Charles Broyhill. Right. We got that. Oh, we also got Cheryl's uh, gay pride thing. Oh, good. Oh, fantastic. Cheryl the big dyke. So Excellent. now that uh, everybody's issues are done with. Buzz, you got any issues? Yeah, but we don't have time. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Hey, look what I found. Grandpa's old radio. Oh, wouldn't it be grand to gather around and have a listen? Well, if turn something on, I'm starting to think. The Don and Mike Show. Do you have any idea how much therapy you people need? You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe. Oh, and I'm going to believe this thing to say. America's favorite coconut-headed MFers, Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. I think the, the, the bad stuff is out of the way. We're all done with that now? Yeah, the good stuff is, uh, for me, the reason we weren't here on uh, Friday, and uh, thank you uh, for allowing us to take that day, mm -hmm. uh, was that my kid at his uh, graduation, uh, he uh, made it through high school, uh, graduated with a really high uh, GPA, and uh, the ceremony itself was uh, fantastic. Uh, for my things even though it's my kid uh way too long just mm -hmm. just way like four hours is just eee. Yeah. way too much about all of the other kids <laughs> yes. now maybe if, if my my kid was one of these real over the top make the world a better place kids he would have gotten one of these shill awards that they were hang, <laughs> handing out uh he didn't so you would have to sit through the the other kids who got the shill awards and you know 
listen to the teacher talk for 10 minutes about what a great... It would be shill awards if your kid had gotten one. Well, no, I, no, I maintain it would, it would be a shill award. And I, I, I would have felt the same way. It was like, okay... So my kid or whatever, whoever or else's kid. Yeah, I, I must respectfully disagree with you that you would have been, uh, you would have called it the it's major award. <laughs> no, because Rajile. Here's here's the thing. I, I'm all for kids getting awards in high school, but it's like everything in our society now. You know how there is the Oscars and the the, the oh, Emmys yeah. and the Grammys and there's the we Tony's love to congratulate and each there's other. There's the MTV. Well, now there's not just a class valedictorian. And there's not just like a student of the year. There are eight different eight different awards. There's like there's the Jack of the Year. There's the Humanitarian of the Year. Right. There's the kid that cares most about the teachers of the I year. I received an award in my uh, graduating senior class. Was class clown. Well, now they didn't make you stand up and get it, did they? Unfortunately, it was their bad judgment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is, for every one of these things, you had somebody giving a speech, then the kid coming up, and then. You've got the band playing, and you've got the alumni coming up, and you've got... Anyway, my uh, my kids' uh, senior class, they did a, a great, great prank. At one point, the headmaster, and I'm going to call him a principal from now on. All right. Because that whole <laughs> headmaster thing... He's out be, now, right? Yeah, it's the principal. Get a little freedom now, huh? The principal stands up, and he's giving his speech about virtually the same speech I guess he gives every year. About how where well, there have been ups and downs with the class of 2003, but we've seen them through, and that there have been times of tribulation. And, and at, at one point, all of the kids together, all of the boys together, they all take out headphones and put headphones on and look directly at the headmaster. It was their way of saying, just my interpretation, their way of saying you're boring. And we don't want to hear what you have to say. But as it turns out, the way it was timed in his speech, it almost appeared that they were doing some... Because he was talking about how this generation of kids doesn't listen. And it's, it's a different... It's a, it's a, it's a give-it-to-me-now generation. And they have short attention spans. Nice positive speech. Sure, yeah. But, well, it was not the most positive graduation address I've ever heard. Wow. Uh, but right as he got to the point about these kids don't listen, and, and you'll hear that, that they have short attention spans, he was getting to the point of saying, these kids are not like that. But as soon as he started with, then, you know, this generation, they don't listen, and they they have the, they multitask, and they, they all pulled out headphones <laughs> and just looked at him, and he didn't know what to do, because the parents all started to laugh, <laughs> right? Everybody's cracking up. Uh, then a very long and tedious uh, ceremony, and uh, being as, you know, my real last name is S, starts with S. Mm. Oh, boy. Of course, he was, you know, oh. <laughs> Toward the end. all the way at the very but end. But, of course, even if he was at the beginning, it's not like he, he can leave. just as bad. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's only perfect for the parents that are right in the middle. Yeah. Because then you have the build up, and then you see your, your kid graduate, and then... With the rest of me going, like, yeah, I don't care. I'm cool. He's he's made it. He's made it. He's made enjoy it. the moment. Uh, and then uh, then they got. Did a, you get emotional? I I'm afraid I did. Yeah, I'm afraid I did. Good because, for you. Because uh, you know, at one point he was he was sitting in the front row, and I just looked down there and gave him the old thumbs up, mm -hmm. and he just looked back and gave me the, uh, the thumbs up, and I I had the waterworks going. Good. Just a little bit. That's I had, healthy. But I had sunglasses on, so like no one could tell. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, then they they got this thing where they like a tradition at, at the school, the Landon School that that I went to. They they say now the the class of 2003 will leave and then let's welcome in next year's graduating class, the 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 class of 2004, just more you know more bull. <laughs> and what, what you do is as, as the kids that are going to graduate next year come down, a kid from who's graduated would shake hands and it's like a passing of the torch thing. And then at one point they've got the entire class of 2004 sitting and they say, now, ladies and gentlemen, we're proud to present the class of... And right as he's doing this, you hear my son's uh, class, however many uh, hundreds of uh, the, the hundred kids, whatever it is, all of them screaming, amen, amen, <laughs> amen, amen, like football players before a game. Wow. They're screaming amen because they're so happy to be on their way. To be out. Right. And yeah. it actually disrupted the ceremony. 
where this guy is saying, now, here are our leaders of tomorrow, the class of 2000. And meanwhile, you hear very loudly from just 200 feet away, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. And, uh, he, again, the poor principal, he doesn't know how to handle it because he's lost the crowd because the parents... Hey, we're all loopy. Right. We've all been to this, going to the school for, in some cases, like like my son and others there, ten years at the same school. Right. It's like, oh, we're as ready to go as he is. <laughs> Let me out of here. So, we, so he gets no slack from us. Then once the ceremony is done, then they've got this deal where you have to all the seniors get in a receiving line, and it's. Really, pretty much a chance, I think, just for the for boys to to kiss girls that uh -huh. are they're walking through the line. But uh, we are standing in this incredible CF line, worse than any concert or movie I've ever been to. That was just not moving, and I finally said to Frida and and Big Frida, who was there as well, I said, "Why are we waiting in line to go see our kid?" <laughs> our, our kid, you know, because why don't they? So they want you to congratulate all the other kids? Yeah, and. It's bogus. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not into that. I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down the line and like the seven or eight kids that I know, I'm going to shake their hands and congratulate them. Then I'm going to go down by by our kid. Hmm. And, and by the time I got down there, he said, oh, Dad, I'm so glad to see you. Do I have to stand in this line? And I said, you're a graduate. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. You're done. I said, just come up and tell Mom and, and Grandma goodbye. So he comes up, and Frida was, uh, of course, a boss. He goes, oh, what's he doing out of line? I said, I told him he could get out of line. <laughs> he doesn't have to stand in line for another two hours mm -hmm. to meet people that he doesn't care about. Right. I mean, he's just graduated from high school. Let him. I said, he's, on, he's on a pass. I told, I told him he could take off. Uh, and to show you the value of a good education, <laughs> here's, what, here's the first thing that my son said to me. After he graduated, and I'm very proud. He looks great, and he's he's got his diploma. He says, "Hey, Dad, would you would you take this home for me? This is a diploma." And I said, "Sure." He said, "Be very careful. That's a two hundred thousand dollar piece of paper." <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, thank, <laughs> "Yeah, buddy." I said, "Thank you for crystallizing <laughs> uh, the, uh, the all of the sacrifices I've made." That's good that he's aware different. of that number. Yeah, this, it is. This is private school, so uh, he was out, and now it's now it's Beach Week. It's Senior yes. Week. Very excited about in that. Ocean City, and and he's there, and Frida and I were house sitting with with Bart and some of his friends, and she's going to be there. For most of this week, and I gotta go next weekend to, to help out. Um, I'm on my way down to the beach, and I'm uh, just getting off the Route 50 bypass. They got this thing in Salisbury now where you don't have to go through Salisbury anymore. Yeah, and zip right down to the beach. Yeah, th there's a bypass now, speed limit 65. Great, love that. So, uh, I'm doing about 70, you know, just loving life, thinking, oh, my kid graduated, he made it. Well, these two pricks come by, and they think that they're in the Fast and the Furious. They're like the, the typical prick kid that has, a, like, a, a Honda. Yes, yeah, a Civic, that, a Civic that's all tricked out. Yeah, and he's got it all tricked up, and he thinks that he's in this movie. <laughs> and these guys go by me doing... And the movie was this weekend, too. Right? Well, I, yeah. I saw it. I've got thoughts on that, too. Uh, but they go by me doing maybe, and a very conservatively, 110 miles an hour. Now, I got... No problem with that. That's like the, cot, the pot calling the kettle black, right? Mm -hmm. The problem I have is when you have to make a real sharp right-hand turn to get back onto Route 50 when you pass Salisbury on the bypass. As I'm making the turn, these two guys go flying by me, and one of them cuts right in front of me, and I actually have to fishtail a little bit, and I almost lose control. So... We make the turn to get by the bypass, and we're pulling up in front of the, the minor league stadium there. Oh, a little traffic light. On Route 50, and there's a light there. And uh, the kid in the Honda, as I am pulling up in, behind him in traffic, I see one hand come up through the sunroof, and he's giving me the finger. Oh, dear. So I pull up next to him, and I give him the finger back, and I bzzz, roll my window down, and I go, Hey! Dude, keep driving 100 miles an hour on a curve. And he says to me, and I have absolutely no retort, he says, 
You are old and pathetic. <laughs> and then he punches it. <laughs> and he's gone. Now, you know, what am I going to say? Oh, God. So I, so I lose. You didn't mm. take the uh, weight of your sport utility vehicle and <laughs> pounce on him, smite him, pounce him heavily? No, because I could see the headlines now, you know, old and pathetic disc jockey, you know, <laughs> kills a kid in car, runs over, you know, 19-year-old valedictorian, <laughs> <laughs> which is what he probably was. Uh, no, F that, I'll, I'll let it go. You are old and pathetic. That's what he said. You are old and pathetic. <laughs> so wow. cruel. So I get down to the beach oh, and, uh, God. and, uh, my wife was at the shower on Saturday for, for Lisa. Yes. So I had some quality time with my son. I said, what do you want to do? Before his friends came down for senior week, said, I want to see Too Fast, Too Furious. <laughs> and so he well, can tell people they're old and pathetic. Well, and, and he got the biggest laugh of all about that. Right. You know? So sure. we, we went to see the movie, which is not great, but it's, it's all right. It's crap, but it's okay. I didn't have a problem with people talking behind me in this movie. There was a couple behind me. I didn't say anything to them, but I just want to say parents of the year that they are two of the redneckiest redneckersons that I've ever seen. They're like Boomhauer and Boomhauer's wife. If Boomhauer's wife looked like Boomhauer. Right. Uh, we're in the one o'clock showing of uh, Too Fast, Too Furious in Ocean City. And, of course, it's rainy and muggy, so everybody's going to the movies. Now, the movie's only rated PG, and I think it's a judgment call when you have... A four-year-old, whether you're going to bring a four-year-old boy or girl to a PG-13 movie. And I'd even give them the benefit of the doubt that you think, oh, it's a movie about driving fast cars. What the hell? Well, at one point in this movie, and frankly, I don't care about giving anything away because, let's be honest, it's too fast, too furious. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. It's not like I'm going to tell you the ending to a perfect murder or something. Is there a race in this movie? Uh, Mike, <laughs> that would be giving away some plot. Oh, sorry about that. I'll tell you, at one point, they're torturing a cop, a rogue cop. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they take off his shirt, he's a big fat guy, and they strap him down to these chairs, and they have a live rat. And they put the rat on his belly... And then they put a, a metal bucket over the rat. And the guy's got one of those uh, torches, like, uh, you know, like a welding torch. And what he does is he starts heating up the bucket. And he says to the guy, you know the thing about rats is that they, and he, he was a good bad guy, he says, they can't stand the heat. Do you know that your average rat could chew through steel? When it gets to be a certain temperature inside that bucket, and the rat can no longer stand it, the rat will start to chew through your stomach. And then he will chew down into your, let's say, your private areas. And who knows where the rat will come out. So as he's heating up this, this bucket, and the guy the guy is screaming, ah, I can't do it, I can't tell you, I can't do it. And he goes, oh, the rat is biting me. Now, you don't see any of this, but right. and there, there, there's a four-year-old kid behind us who is a four -year -old? a four-year-old who is crying. Oh. He's saying, I don't want to, I want to say this. I don't and here you go, here you go, parent of the year. Shut up. Just don't look. Look the other way. It'll be over soon. Shut up. We're trying to watch the movie. Wow. You don't need a license to be a parent. Unbelievable. Wow. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to... Who am I? I get in too many fights. I mean, really, what can you do? And I mean, I, it, is, it is tough. You know. I get in mm. too many fights in the movies anyway, so I, I let it go. Uh, so that's, that's that. I'm, I'm old. I'm pathetic that I was at the <laughs> movies. And, and then it's my wife's birthday, and I got the added pressure of my wife's birthday on Saturday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Frida. Yeah. She's all ragged out because she's uh, coming down after going to Lisa's shower, and, and she's already told me earlier in the day that she wants to celebrate her birthday. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm ready for a celebration <laughs> or not. I, you know, I was just... <laughs> I was going to give her a gift and you know, take her out to dinner. But I, uh, as it turns out, did you know the wise thing, got the nice mushy card, uh, wrapped the gifts myself, uh, got a bottle of uh, champagne, went out and got a cake, did the uh, the thing myself where you... Wow. You ride on there. You know, I, made, I made the flowers and then wrote happy, right. happy birthday, Frida. And uh, <laughs> it, let me just say, impossible to get 48 candles on that cake. Impossible. <laughs> Possible, so I could only go with 24. Okay, very good. But when she came, like the TV show, when she, when she came in, yeah, 24. 
when she came in the room, I knew home run city. Uh, mm -hmm. and she came upstairs and was like, oh, I don't believe this is so great. And I said, yeah, this, I know it's great. Th thank you very much now, but hurry, hurry, hurry. Change your clothes so we can go to have our dinner. Because I got re reservations right. for dinner. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, I got one in the bank because I handled it perfectly. Oh, good. Congratulations. And we will now seg into the next topic. <laughs> While we were at dinner on Saturday night, celebrating my wife's birthday, she was telling me about the bridal shower that she went to <laughs> for Lisa Herndon. Very exciting. I heard a little about this myself. Well, Buzz, I heard a lot about it. <laughs> and we're all going to hear about it now. Excellent. Because the stuff that Frida was telling me, I was double Did one of the fabulous Herndon sisters throw the uh, shower. The uh, I don't know which the one famous Dee Dee or the famous Kathy. I don't know which one did, but whoever did it. Was I got a hug from Kathy on Friday night. Hey, baby. Oh, hi, sweet Dee. I wish you were here. Yep. As soon as I leave, of course, the weather's great at the beach. No, that's not why. I wish you were here to help me be in charge of room patrol among teenagers. Oh yes, this is, we have uh, boys and girls mm. staying at our house for senior week this week. Hey. But come on, give it up. Who gave you the greatest birthday you've had in the last year? You. <laughs> in the last year. Yeah, right. Uh, you, you, you are so thoughtful. I, I just could not believe um, how lucky I've become. Huh? Be Tell me that. Yeah. She actually told me That's that. That's nice. Yeah. No, no I mean, because, uh, you know, in matter of fact, at the shower I was at, they had uh, a book that got passed around that you had to write your marital advice in for Lisa. And so I wrote in there, when things are rough, just hang in there because they get better eventually. And things are, you know, it was, it's certainly true. I mean, it's wonderful. You were so thoughtful. Well, I sure do love you, and I appreciate all all of your help with uh, my F Up family. And you, you know, you've done a great job with uh, with Bart. Um, and uh, did you hear Carrie's advice? Yeah. <laughs> what is well, Carrie's? Oh yeah, wait a minute. Carrie's, three Carrie's advice. Carrie's advice, at least what I heard, mm -hmm. is always ice the bruise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah. So, so what Carrie really wrote was, you were supposed to put your advice on a happy marriage, and she wrote. There's such a thing as a happy marriage. Oh, my God. Oh, we're, out, we're out to eat Saturday night, and Frida starts saying to me, I learned so much about Charles Broyhill at the shower for now, Lisa. Now, this is good. It was like being in the twilight zone. This is good. So as it turns out, what they would do, what they did was they asked Charlie about 30 questions, and Lisa was supposed to guess the answer, see right. if she knew what, what Charlie would answer. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we're going to have to break here, but when we come back, I'm going to share them with you. And, and uh, Buzz, I hope Marcia didn't tell you too much. No, not too much. Just um, a little. Just enough to be interested. But I think, Mike, uh, you'll like it because no one told you. You'll be able to play the game. Yeah, ah, that's right. I can't wait. How much you know about <laughs> Charles Broyhill. Oh, good. And I think you will be amazed... At some of the answers. He's a mystery man. Some of the answers that are in this in this quiz. Very good. Were, uh, baby, weren't you surprised by the stuff at the shower? He was, He is uh, romantic. He is the the. I think of now him like Fabio. Oh, now don't give anything oh, away. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't. But but suffice it to say, uh, Bart, you were. What was that? Hello. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, all right. Well, call me. Let me know when you'll be in and stuff. Okay, sugar. No, 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 no. Grammy and I will probably get something to eat, maybe go to a movie or something. No, 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 no. What? No, no, no. You got to get the time. No. Daddy's saying have a good time, and he loves you, sugar bear. Things run so different when I'm not there. Right. Well, he's a good boy. He came up and he said, can we take a nap? No. There'll be no napping on my watch. Ah, uh, you mean with uh, with his lady friend? N napping all in the yes, in the same room. Oh uh, God! Uh, there's no napping. Wow! Well, <laughs> can we take a nap? <laughs> a nap. We're very tired. We need to take a nap. Let's we'll take a nap with the door locked. Well, anyway, thank you. That was a wonderful brush off you gave me there uh, <laughs> just a moment ago. Uh, but anyway. Oh wait a minute! One more thing. What part? I'm on the air. I'm 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 performing. Mommy, <laughs> mommy's on the air. <laughs> I'm performing. <laughs> Hey, put, put the graduate on. <laughs> what? I won't, I won't, I won't do the deadbolt. Okay. Except for you burglars. Okay. Except for right. 
Hey, bye bye. Hey, is, is he there? He's leaving. That's what I Put him on for a second. Daddy, Daddy wants to talk to you for a minute. <laughs> Can you pick it up in your room, sweet pea? Yeah. Thank you. See, he now loves the radio. <laughs> he does. It, no, he said okay very resignedly. Oh, he did? Quite the imposition. Hello. Greetings from Planet Frida. Hey, congratulations, <laughs> Bart. Merci yeah. beaucoup. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> oh, listen, my man, cuz. That's, that's our joke. What's up, bra? Anyone who's seen Too Fast, Too Furious, even Bart had to say, the dialogue was beyond moronic. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, bro, what's bro? happening? Hey, hey, cuz. What? Cuz, my pockets are empty. No, he doesn't say my pockets are empty. What does he say? The pockets ain't empty. These pockets ain't empty. <laughs> now listen, you um, all that stuff I told you in private, you know to do, right? I'm talking about senior week. Which stuff? You know the, the D and D. Oh. No D and D. That's a that's good. I, I can even noodle that one through. D and D. No, no, I never even talked about. It. He doesn't D and D. I know. Right. I'm just saying. I can't remember what you were talking about. Well, it, you listen so good. Yeah. What are you still doing on the phone? This is D and D. No, no, it's drinking. Oh, yeah, drinking and driving. No, oh, okay. no, it's just been nice talking to you. Bye. Okay, bye, bye, babe. Anyway, uh, act like you would if I was there. All right. What am, what am I not supposed to do? <laughs> you know, just just make sure you tell mom where you are. That's all I'm asking. Right. Okay, that's all. And how does it feel to graduate? It feels pretty good. It feels outstanding. Hey, I was talking on the radio about how all you guys put your headphones on during the ceremony. Yeah. Like that. And the reason you guys were screaming amen was? Amen. Amen. To be done with school? It's over. Be done with school. You got it. All right, have a good senior week. Okay. All right, cuz. All right. That it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes, that's it. I just wanted to, to say to you, it's easier on the radio than in, in private, so I'm not lecturing you. Just have the same set of rules when I'm not there. Well, it's not like I'm going to be rolling a keg up in my room now that you're not here. <laughs> well, I don't know. So just make sure you don't. That's that's it. Have a great time. Okay. And no naps. What? No naps. The nap is a fine rule when the door's open. No napping. No <laughs> napping with girls. I was going to nap with Kyle. <laughs> God, you faggot. <laughs> Dad, you should be more accepting of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, bud. I love you. I'll see you later. Tivo Queer is full for me. Okay. Bye. Okay, I'll Tivo Queer is full. <laughs> there he is. There he goes. Champ God. Oh, that, you know, he says something like that. He does that kind of shtick, and it makes me realize the time, the clock on the wall. Mm. Champion. So do you feel all the pathetic now that your son has graduated high school? No. Only only because those kids pulled up next to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I no. drive a cool car, too. Yeah, you do. You know, how do they know I wasn't some guys who going to jump out and kick their ass? Yeah. Because yeah. no, you rolled down the window. Well, I guess they knew. <laughs> also because, and I'll, uh, Robbie, i got to get this in fast because okay. we got a break. I'm outside over the weekend. Mike alluded to this. I'm uh, loading stuff in our garbage can. we got one of those... Big uh, garbage cans on wheels, you know the green, the big green kind. Yeah. Right. Well, I've got I've got boxes in my hand, and what I'm doing is I'm flipping open the 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 top of the garbage can mm -hmm. to get it to to open up so that I can just dump all the boxes in, and I flip the the top back, mm -hmm. and it goes backwards, and I I hit it with such. An incredible He-Man of the Universe strength. Yes, the no. thing comes <laughs> comes flying back oh, no. and <laughs> caught me right on the bridge of my nose. That's a thin piece of skin up there. <laughs> yeah. That looks like you got whacked. Yeah, and everybody keeps saying to me, were you in a fight? Yeah. And I say, I'd love to say that I was in a fight. <laughs> no, I was in a fight with my garbage can. <laughs> and the garbage can won. It just doesn't get any better than this. There it is. Do you understand? I'm standing... It's a, it's a yeah. tough-looking scar, though. I'm standing in front of the, the big green garbage can on wheels, and... Yeah, I, you flip it open, and it flips right back, and... and Hatchets you on top of the bridge of the nose. Wow. Nice, nice big. Cup. I bet that was a little painful. It was and embarrassing. You, because, you see you know, stars? There's people around. Stars. Uh, yes, stars. I did. I saw Ben Affleck. I saw <laughs> J Lo. Um, all right, Michael. When we come back. You're going to take the quiz. I'm so excited about this. The Charlie Broyhill, Lisa Hearn, I, and I'm going to predict uh, how many questions are there. Oh, I don't know. There's got to be at least thirty. I predict wow. I'm going to get at least a B plus. 
All right, we'll find out. And everybody at home can play along, too. All right. Yeah. You've, heard, you've heard Charlie on the show for almost a while. I'm going to get a B-plus on that monkey. Let's see how well everybody <laughs> knows uh, the Cro-Magnon and the man. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. How can I ever repay you? Well, a reward would be good. There is some damage to my car. It's a high-performance machine, so I had to come up with premium. Would you like for me to take your pants up and America's favorite damn dummies, Don and Mike. Uh, somebody finally gave me the information. Those uh, guys in Baltimore on Live 105. It's Out to Lunch with Bill and Thrill. Uh -huh. Bill and Thrill? That's the midday show. It's pretty good. Ooh, pretty good. Pretty good. If I was running things here, I did for a while. It just didn't listen, so I quit. Right. Uh, put that on middays. Does that Ron and Fez work four hours a day at night? Right. Makes it's nuts. Having Ron and Fest come in for an hour, <laughs> going back home for a couple hours, and then coming back and working four more hours. It's nuts. I mean, I know a lot of you around the country don't don't know. This is what's going on here at uh, WJFK, or as it's referred to in the industry, <laughs> laughing stock. <laughs> oh, um, okay, here we go. Oh, and, oh, and about Baltimore. I just mentioned Baltimore. Uh, tomorrow on the show, we're going to devote one break to Baltimore. Right. We're talking to Baltimore and about Baltimore. However, Mike, with the caveat that we're not using our Marty Bass voices. And I'll tell you why. The HBO uh, TV series The Wire, yes, which is based in Baltimore, right. what they want from us is one break of us doing a radio show about Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And you know, like everything, it'll end up just being background for 10 seconds. But, right, right. But at least they identify our show as being Baltimore Radio, mm -hmm. so they said, "Would you please do a uh, do a segment, Rob? No, we can't do a segment called Where Is Cal? <laughs> it's just got to be a got to be a regular show." And they said, "We love it. Do anything you want. Just please." So we talk. We don't talk like Marty Bass, but we can talk like Don Scott. <laughs> they asked that we don't use those voices. But Don Scott doesn't have a Baltimore accent. Oh, I, I, Ac accent, not accident. <laughs> that. You know, that's debatable. Cause Don I'm, Scott talks like this. But he's got a Don little... Don Scott has no Baltimore accent. He's got a touch of it. No, he's just Baltimore. That's... Okay. But he's, he doesn't talk. Marty Bass has that. Hello. Doesn't Don <laughs> Scott have a little lisp, though? No, he's got bad skin. No, that's Stan oh, Stovall yeah, that yeah, has I'm the lisp. <laughs> well, let's kick him off the broadcast, okay? <laughs> bad hair. <laughs> Stan Stovall, who um, I think got fired from, was it 11 or 13, and now is relegated to doing... The morning show at Channel 2 on the weekend. Right. And I read where my buddy, uh, not my buddy, but my classmate, Derek McGinty, is coming back to town to do, uh, like a, what, a, like a 7 o'clock Channel 9 show or something like that? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's better than his last gig, I'm sure. His, his last gig was like, uh, World News Now at, at 2 a.m. or something like that, the wee hours of the morning. It's probably better than being on Channel 9 at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. And oh, and about more about local TV, I don't know if you read today, they had the uh, the Emmys, uh, the local Emmys, the Washington, Baltimore area Emmys. Were no weathermen given Emmys? <laughs> oh, no, Tom Sater won, the guy from Channel 5. But here's I, the I, I wrote a letter that said, please don't give any Emmy awards to the weathermen. They just here's, listen. here's the thing. Have you, have you ever watched, like, Fox, where the beginning of every newscast, and at the end they say, Thank you for watching the Emmy-laden Fox 5 newscast, <laughs> winner of 28 Emmys. Right. Well, as it turns out, like all of the radio stuff that we refuse to be involved with, it's a giant J.O. Everybody that, gets Emmys. No. To get nominated, you have to nominate yourself. Right. So... Why doesn't Channel 7 have the best anchor? Because Channel 7, as much as it pains me to say it, has got some scruples. Right. And they don't nominate their people. Also, according to something I read in the newspaper today, so first off, if you want to get a, a local TV Emmy, like for TV news, mm -hmm. you've got to nominate yourself. Which, which to, to me, and I know you agree, we felt the same way Maybe about... Maybe we could submit our names and just sneak it in. <laughs> the radio thing. You know, to win, like, one of these Achievement in Radio Awards, you have to nominate yourself. Right. 
Now, what kind of an award show is that where you are, you're saying, pick me? It's like the Oscars and the Emmys. I mean, the real things. That's how they work. They nominate themselves. Hey, did the Washingtonian stuff come out yet? I have no idea. Does anybody know? I don't know. All right. But uh, the, the point here about Channel 5 is, yes, they did win uh, some ridiculous amount of Emmys. Did Will Thomas win any? Yeah. Yes, best female anchor. Um, and also, he modeled for the statue this year. He got naked. I'm holding up the ball. Right. Hold on, hey Robbie. You With that, that pose. Yes. You know what I'm missing? Up oh, now, I got it. Here we go. Yeah. That's the car pages. Car. Guys. Great. What is this? That's yesterday. It's Sunday's paper. Oh, here's today's file. You got today's paper. Thank you. Okay. Listen to this. How ridiculous this is. Channel 5. Oh, it's got the thing on Hillary. You got that in the news, right? Yes, absolutely. So we're not going to talk about that now. Later. Big dumb Hillary. <laughs> I'm very mad. She, thanks for the insight. <laughs> I wanted to wring his neck. I told you there wouldn't be anything in it. What did you right. expect? She's a senator. She wants to run for president. She's not going to give you anything. I wanted to wring his neck. Really? You didn't want to kick him the balls? <laughs> you didn't want to cut off, cut off his genitals? That's not senatorial. Right. You know that whole thing about I want to wring his neck? Mm -hmm. That's like what my wife says to me when I don't bring the trash up to the curb. I could yeah. wring your neck. That's right. code. Yeah. I could cut off your bees. Hey. Listen. Lick the bees! <laughs> he, shot, he shot his goo all over a girl's dress. Mm -hmm. You expect something more impassioned. I could have wrung his neck. Ooh, anyway. That cad. Oh, fudge. Channel 5 cleans up again at Emmys. Uh, blah, 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 blah. The reason Channel 5 won all of the Emmys is Channel 5... Um, Channel 5 steamrolled through the local Emmy Awards Saturday night, taking home 17 statues. It's the sixth straight year the Fox station has led the pack. They won in many high-profile categories, including Best Anchor for Tracy Neal. Uh, All right, that's a good choice. Best Emmy for Evening Newscast. Uh, best Dress Hold on, for Will Thomas. <laughs> best, best Evening Newscast for a major market, which was inevitable. Since it was the only nomination in the category. <laughs> well, wait, wait, I don't get it. I thought the Emmys, they at least nominated people. The local chapter of the National Academy of Arts and Scientists, it is, it, science, sciences, mm -hmm. it is totally on the TV stations to nominate themselves. Right. There's not like a panel of blue ribbon judges. So, Channel 5 nominated themselves something like 30 times. Um, you know, that's a good PR department. And wow. they won 17. Now, now, I have more respect for the stations that said, this is bull. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to nominate myself if there's a panel of, of non-inside my station people that are going to make an objective decision. Right. Well, let's go with it. But does that mean that Emmy has once again overlooked Krebs and Harrison? <laughs> yeah. uh, here you go. Channel yeah. 5. The Fox, worst. Fox 5. Sunny <laughs> outside, National Airport. Oh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm Joe Krebs. Um, hey, I do, I do like this, though, uh, that there was something about uh, George Gimbel in here. <laughs> about, uh, <laughs> Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> no. no. Uh, and the Emmy goes to... <laughs> George, now listen, George Michael. Back in 1903. George and, Michael, stop it. Who, um, inventor of the radon tube. <laughs> Here he is. He's a good guy. You know, Back George when he Michael. Used to call the games at the polo grounds. Anyway, he won the uh, he won the award for uh, best best sportscaster. Mm -hmm. Best okay. orange sportscaster. So, <laughs> hold on a second. This is funny. There were no nominations for best sports anchor. Really, oh. but. WRC's George Michael did win for best sports cast. Good thing, because their entry was the only nominee in the category yeah. for best sports broadcast. Channel 4 News Director Bob, Mike, Bob Long accepted on behalf of George Michael a perennial no-show at the local Emmys. Good way to go, George. Good for you, George. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We've never told him about these, Long said about the statues that have amazed, amassed for Michael over three years. We have a huge collection of them. And uh, <laughs> don't tell him about it. <laughs> he forget. Hey, I, I got I got those statues. Ah, cockamamie. <laughs> Who knows that? Okay. And now, 
Here you go. The Emmy for Best Sportscaster goes to... <laughs> Our favorite George Michael tape right anyway, there. Good, good for George, but you know, kind of bogus. I, I mean, I watch Fox all the time, but Jesus Christ, it kind of devalues the fact that they run these promos after every newscast. What? What did he do? What did he do? He wrote something down. What did he write? He said, he said George forget to a pad. George is not that old. I know. He's, he's you, only said you, you participated. <laughs> you participated in this. I swear. I, started, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. No, no you don't. You're know doing what the I'm Redskins doing. thing this year, and you're oh, no, going to put into Georgia again. No, you're wrong. I'm not doing the Redskins this year. You're not. Really? No. I just told somebody over the weekend you were. Yeah. You know why I'm not doing it? Because this is the cheapest goddamn station on the planet. Right. You really think that's going to go down that way? <laughs> they don't want to pay us. Oh. I mean, me and Kurt. All right. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Oh. No, and I'm not worried about running into George. Hell, I was at the... Hello? Hey. Hey. Hey, what are you, what are you enjoying for lunch? Oh, well, this is just a snack. It's an apple. Ah, any word um, from he, the man with many hats? No, the only thing I got was, are you ever going to talk to me again? See, here's the thing. Uh, I want to do the Redskins pregame sure. show. I desperately want to do it, even though it'll F up my schedule and, and my wife is not for it. And Charlie wants to produce the Redskins game. Nobody better. We, we've... They, they asked us back in December if we'd like to, to be involved with the Redskins broadcast. We said, yes, absolutely. I said, great. Well, they told us last week, mm, we just don't have the money. Right. We just don't have the well, money. Okay. So, you know, we've given them a deadline, and the, the deadline is next Friday. Mm -hmm. And that would be exactly seven months after they asked us if we would like to, to come back and work on the Redskins show. You guys do a great job. Yep. And it's not, I, let me tell you something, it, we ain't talking about big F you money. I know. We're talking about, now what, now what, Rob? Rob, let me write down that link. When, <laughs> Rob's getting me with these George lines. You're right. When George first did the pregame show, they paid him in, in frankincense. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, that's not why. That's not why. I, I, listen, George is an old man. <laughs> I'll say it. This is what they were saying. I have no problem saying that. And you think I was not saying it because I'm going to see him at the Redskins game. Right. But I got no problem with it. We won't oh, be there anyway. Right, we won't be there. Right. Because Alan Linemon doesn't care. Well, he does, but it's just, it just it doesn't fit into his schedule yet to care. You should see one of the responses that we, uh, Charlie got from an email. It sent him a, re sent him a letter. Uh, and actually, by Bruno Sanders, it was pretty nice. It was, uh, you know, dear Alan, uh, Don and I need to know, you know, mm -hmm. if if we're go if we're a go for the Redskins season because you know we have to we, every single weekend is taken up with this stuff, and we'd like to know in advance. And Charlie's trying to plan a honeymoon, and uh, please let us know by Friday, June twentieth, or we're going to have to back out. Which is only six weeks before the first preseason game, wow. and. He wrote a, ni a, a, a very nice one-word response. Nice. Yeah. He sent back an email saying nice, mm -hmm. as if to say, you know, hey, that's nice of you guys. Mm -hmm. Except he didn't mean it. Like yeah. it was nice. It was like, right. Nice. Well, there's a little tension around. Right. Huh. So I don't know if we're doing the Redskins or not this year. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, Charles. Don't mess up my honeymoon. <laughs> nope. And you're going to have a great honeymoon based on these questions and answers I have. Oh, I can't wait. All right, I'm going to start it right now. Okay. Okay. Bye, Charles. <laughs> yeah, let's see. i got to do a break. Yeah. i got one question before we uh, go to break, and I promise we'll come back and we'll do this. Are you ready, Mike? I am ready. These are questions supplied to me, given at Lisa Herndon's... You have the answers also? ...shower. The deal was they asked Lisa questions about Charlie that Charlie had answered... In advance, Mike, let's see if you can guess Charlie's answer. What is Lisa's favorite place to vacation? Lisa's favorite place to vacation? I will say Ocean City. Close, but not exactly. How about Charlie's favorite place to vacation? 
home. No, I am sorry. Lisa's favorite place is any place warm. Mm -hmm. And Charlie's favorite place to vacation is any place there together. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Very nice. Jesus Christ. I think we're going to need the puke sound effect. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Oh, my God. Stand by. Wow. Plenty more of uh, uh, Charles and Lisa as we, <laughs> as we count down to the wedding. <laughs> Just like three three weeks away from now. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> right now. This is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. I can't remember being surrounded by so much happiness. I'm so happy. I can't wait to come back tomorrow. The Don and Mike Show. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-265-3636. They're ready to believe you. Uh-oh. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. It's where wrongs are righted and rights are eliminated. The Don and Mike Show. Uh, hello there, Don and Mike. Hello. Yeah, hi. Yes, I was listening to you guys talk about the Emmy Awards. The local? And, uh, yeah. The local ones, and I just received one this Saturday for the Baltimore Ravens for uh, Best Sports Live programming. Well, you sound like an Emmy winner, sir. You do? Yes, yeah. sir. And uh, it's a little more than I've also judged uh, for Emmys as well, and it's a little more than just nominating yourself. Yes, explain. Uh, um, well, you you pay for you know to enter the. Uh, you wait. Did you say you won an Emmy? Yes, sir. Well, for and, being a dumb sounding guy. And you paid to enter? No, the Baltimore Ravens paid. Every um, mm -hmm. every company pays uh, to enter. What did you win an Emmy for? Uh, kickoff, uh, Ravens kickoff at the preseason game. Uh, now you couldn't be on. You couldn't be an on-air person. I am not on air. I am behind. I'm behind the scenes. I'm what do you do? I'm associate producer. I do ENG sound for them, and I also. Uh, I will listen here. Field. Regardless of what you're saying, so well, technically, even... did you win the Emmy? Yes, I did. By name, they mentioned you. Yes. But well, it's five it's, producers. But it's even worse. It's one thing to nominate yourself. How ridiculous is that? But then you have to pay for it. Yeah. No, 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 no. You, you, just like any contest, you pay to you pay to be able to have the ability to enter. No, no, no. Uh, not not, not like be. not like in any contest. You don't have to pay to enter any contest. Any any award. No, in, uh, I don't. The industry. I don't. <laughs> you're funny. Really? Okay. What, what other awards do you have to pay? I mean, I know that there are Jive Radio Awards mm -hmm. that we don't participate in because we think the notion of nominating yourself is pretty presumptuous. But tell me of another one, another major award where you have to pay yourself or, well, or, or your company pays. The, the Web Awards, um, which are another award. The Web Awards. Not, not the Webbies, no. There's, yeah. there's an award called like the, the real award, Emmys, the real Emmys, they don't pay. Well, yeah, they do. The production company enters that enters that into there. I want to say you're a you're a you're a brilliant and very very timely spokesman for the local Emmy Awards. Thank you for setting us straight. Well, no, I'm I'm just trying to I, I, as a as a winner of one, I'm just trying to defend as it. As a winner something. of one. <laughs> winner of two of them. Stop. Actually, thank you very much. Winner of two of them. Winner the of two years, I have won, <laughs> and the Ravens have won ten of them in the past seven years. Ten of them. <laughs> yeah. ten of them. Like, you are yeah. the biggest retard. Not just anybody. Can I was win. I was a I was a big fan of your show. Oh, you were and now, and now we've now, lost now you. Now you're not formerly. Now you guys are being jerks. I mean, why should I lose? <laughs> now listen, but no, you just don't sound like an Emmy winner. You sound like a guy that maybe barely got out of high school. Your enunciation and it's is the way you, it's the way really? you express. Uh, your uh, okay. okay, I'm an artist. Your command. <laughs> your command. Excuse me. Your command. How old are you? Of the language. <laughs> 27 years old. Leaves a lot to be desired. What I do they hand, like, your whole broadcast? You all get, like, seven Emmys? I don't doubt that you, uh, that, that you in fact, have won two Emmys, and perhaps you're very good on the technical side. But as, when it comes to being a spokesperson as to 
debating the points that we were bringing up about why we think this is bogus. You're kind of funny to listen hey, to. Dude, you're like okay. retarded. <laughs> and I'm driving here, you know, trying to find a place to walk. And, I, and, well. I, and I understand yeah. that driving and speaking is incredibly taxing, especially for an Emmy winner. So you won, <laughs> you won an Emmy last year? Yes. And you won an Emmy this year? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and what exactly what was the category and who were you nominated against? Um, we were nominated against uh, this past year. We were nominated against nobody, so we unequivocally won. You probably but, you know what? Say, yeah. say how, how did you <laughs> win? <laughs> unequivocally. So you were nominated against nobody, which means that no well, other. Well, that does not mean nobody else entered. That does not mean that because. This is the other point that I was calling to say is that I have judged Emmys as well. Hold on, hold on, I've... hold on, hold on just a second. If okay. you were the only people who paid to be, no. to be judged and you that's had not no it, though. and you had no but you had no competition. No, 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 that's that is not the case at all. As in the 2000 years there was no nominations in any sports category at all. Um, there was no nominations in any sports category yes. at all. Hmm. In, two, in, in the year 2000, there were no nominations for any sports category. Do you do uh, any writing for the broadcast? No, I do not. I do all good. the technical stuff. I, I do all the technical stuff for Listen, it. Listen, congratulations. I also administer the Baltimore Ravens website. I think not, well, only, I just, not only are are you a testament to what it takes to be an Emmy winner, mm -hmm. A local Emmy winner, right? You are, are also an excellent spokesperson for the, for the Emmys themselves, for the entire process, and how <laughs> proud your fellow Emmy winners must be. But I think you you totally. I still don't understand the bit about he was the only one nominated, but there were other people nominated. Well, can, I explain, right? well, you're, you're, can I explain that? Can I explain that a little bit? Well, try because, because you haven't done a really good job so far. Okay. Um, okay. Well, as a judge of an Emmy, there are. About 15 different uh, as entries. A judge, as a and judge as of the Emmys. I have, I have judged the Emmys. I've been on a judging panel for the Emmys. And what you do with that is you sit in the room and you watch about 15, 20 tapes and you put scores to them. There is a standard. <laughs> a one to ten standard. To How, can you perhaps be a little more concise? Um, creativity, How? content, and... How is, uh, no, 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 no. How, How is, is it? You were nominated, and you say there were other people, but you were the only ones that won. Uh, but you, I did, we, did not, we did not judge ourselves. They're judged by out of town. Oh. But there was no competition in this category. You were the only show or... We go, well, no, we go against the uh, Redskins report, those lovely Redskins. You said that you were the only so ones much. nominated. Uh, we were the only ones nominated, but we were not the only ones that entered. You enter, and then they have a nomination dinner where they announce all the nominations. I they have see. So you can you can throw an. Well, why wouldn't they nominate everybody? That doesn't hurt. Why wouldn't they nominate more people? Maybe the Redskins wouldn't pay. Well, you know, Daniel Snyder is a very uh, cheap guy. Man. So is that what it is? That that the people that don't get nominated don't pay the money? Yes, very much so. Uh, yeah, well, that's crap. Yeah. <laughs> then that reinforces George our Michael, argument. George Michael has like a ten a ten thousand dollar budget for the Emmys. So he pays all this money to enter 10 million categories. To enter. George Michael didn't enter. George Michael Sports Machine won a couple of their producers. Wait a minute, won. wait. You're saying you can enter and not be nominated. Correct. You can enter. We entered, we entered about five different Wait a minute, hold on a second. I would think that you would pay the money when you enter. Yes. Well, then what? <laughs> <laughs> then why is it everybody nominated? Because it, it's fitted that way. It's not like you can pay for the award. You pay for the chance to get nominated. Listen, no matter how you're describing like it, raffle. the whole thing is... Yeah, it's like the, a it's the whole, ludicrous. The whole thing is bull. Yeah. The, the, only, the only award that would matter, I would think, would be an award from your peers where yeah. you didn't have to... Please hear me out. Where you didn't have to nominate yourself, blow your own horn, and second, where you didn't have to pay a fee. What you would what like, I don't understand is if, if you've got two shows that pay a fee, mm -hmm. how come they're both not nominated? Because there's a standard. There are peers that sit around in a room, five, uh, a group of five people, that are all in the industry. But do you understand what I'm saying? Watch and have standards. So but if there's only two... Talk, but if there's... people just... Because they have, a, you know, they might enter. Not everybody can idiot. Not ev not everybody can be an Emmy winner like our friend here. Yeah. 
<laughs> it makes no sense to have an award show where there's only one nominee because there's no suspense. And if the other shows in your category took the time and spent the money to enter, they should be nominated too. Why? If they're not as good, why should they? Well, when you have the Oscars, there's certain movies that aren't as good, but they're right. still nominated. And, and yeah, because some somebody watched it and thought that it was good enough to enter. You know. You know like, what? I, I think there, there's the problem is guys like you on a nominating committee. Like, you don't yeah. you don't understand what an award show is all about. Exactly what? Well, what, what is, what, you tell me what is an award show about then? Exactly. Award show is like yeah, giving a chance for what people you to win? choose between what? you and somebody else. What Emmy did you win? Oh. What Emmy? Uh, sports programming live coverage. You know what? I'm realizing right now we're arguing with this guy and we are being completely duped. You think so? We are being completely duped, and I ju I just figured it out. <laughs> yeah, you're not an Emmy winner. Yes, I am, sir. No, you're not. You're a kid. You're an I'm idiot a kid. kid. Yeah, you're an idiot no, no. kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I don't see the uh, category because here. Because this is some, like, college student. Do you have, what, what, do you, what do you have in front of you? Do you have the book in front of you? The, the uh, program? I have, or I have, have I, I, a hey, book. excuse me, anywhere. From yes, today's sir. Washington Post. Okay. Emmy Award winners for 2002. News program, news programs, program station image, special sports, news series, sports, editing general segments, photography live, documentaries, magazine format, editing, sports, audio studio remote, children's programs, tape, program segments, public affairs, news segments. And if he won for the Ravens, he wouldn't be at the Washington Emmys. No, it's the original Emmys. It's Washington, it's Washington Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sportscast, host, interviewer, editing, public affairs, acting, performing, announcing. Sports, Sports program. Five, All right, what is your name? Brett Dorman. Now it does say sports programming live coverage. <laughs> Kickoff, Rave TV, Larry Rosen, reporter, and W. Donald Dorado, Lauren Taubman, Brett Torman, and Pete Hawk. Producers, mm. so it's a very good chance that this moron is an Emmy winner. What is winner. his name? He, he said Brett, his name was Brett, Brett Dorman. Brett Dorman, and the name is it's in there. It's in there. Thank you. <laughs> but, but, Still, no, but you're a, I'm not trying to lie to you guys. I just wanted to no, say something but, else, but it's not like something. But, but you're, you're not as bull as you guys are saying. It, you're an idiot, and you've won a you you have won a prize that he's devalued. I'm, I'm an idiot. You were talking about stupid stuff. Don't use the S bomb there. You have done more. By your phone call, you have done more to indicate to us that the Emmys are valueless. The local TV Emmys are valueless. You've hurt the cause. It's not like the national Emmys where you have, you know, wonderful categories with four choices. You're telling me that some peer group sits there in a room. A local peer group and boycotts certain shows, and you want. I think it's fixed. You're you're on. It's it, it's not it's not in it's not local. Listen I think the that. fact that you've won for two years in a row is proof positive and listen, that it's fixed. Congratulations! <laughs> you won, you won a useless award that you had to pay for. You won a loose a useless award. Have you ever a won? Award. Have you ever won an award? Where you didn't pay an entry fee? Oh yeah. Really name it. Well, you know, in college, of course. You know, no, I, I, I mean, never know a professional award. In, in the so, real world. And I'd like to know where he went to college. Where did you go to college? I, I went to Villa Julie College. Pardon me? Villa Julie College. It's a school in Baltimore. Uh, started video what is, what is that? Thirteenth grade? What is I that know. like? Is that like a correspondence school? No, it's it's, it's kind of like geared toward the, as a vocational school. It's a vocational. So. But it's not. It is, it's, it's, no, 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 no. I don't say it like that. I say it like that. You went to a trade school. You didn't go no, to college. No, I did not. School. No, no, I did not. I, I, I'm not trying to represent Village Holy College like that because it was a four-year college, and it actually they now offer. And for, uh, and for some people, it's an eight-year college. <laughs> Listen, so point, you went to a four-year trade school. Listen, point well taken. You are an Emmy winner. You're right. We're wrong. No, we, no, we stand in front matter. of you and we say, "Listen, you have won the pinnacle, the 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 most achievement you can win in your industry. Congratulations." 
You're right up there as far as I'm concerned with the cast of Friends. I mean, why? Yeah. No, it's no wonder nobody else was nominated because, I mean, you're the best. You're the pinnacle. Why nominate anybody against you? Exactly. Like when it's hopeless. Right. Why? Why go? Right. Why, why even have I, the? Why, why try? Why it's even hopeless. have the uh, the, the process? Why? Why pay the entry fee? And mm -hmm. incidentally, what is the fee that you have to pay to enter yourself? I, I think uh, it, it's um, one hundred and fifty dollars per person that you nominate. And that's maybe that you enter. And what's the value of the statue? What would maybe nine bucks? <laughs> no, no, it's a nice little. It's the same. It's the same statue that those people, the friends, and you know, all those others. And now, you, and now you've got two, and like all your uh, coworkers have two. No, 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 no. no. The guy that like, um, the guy that duct tapes down the cables. Did he win one too? No, no. Good. Okay. We actually do the we actually do the grunt work, the production. Uh, you know, travel with the team and. We work with them six days a week. We are honored. So, we are honored to be in the presence of an Emmy winner <laughs> really? and someone who. Listen, you may tell your friends that you were on the show. I feel more. I, I feel. I feel so wonderful <laughs> about the local Emmys now after talking to this guy. You sure. set us straight. It's Brett, right? Brett. Yes, sir. Brett Dornan, two-time Emmy winner, two-time Emmy winner at the at the tender age of twenty-seven, and. And keep in mind this great accomplishment. This year for his work with the Ravens, not only did he win a second Emmy, there was no competition, and he paid $150 to enter. Good work. That is no, but I didn't pay anything. That is the key. That's right. Your producers did. But somebody did. No, my bosses did. Your bosses did. The, the company that produces the show did. Was yeah. he blessed to win back-to-back? -back? Are you a two-year-in-a-row two winner? Yes, sir. Wow. Good luck Man, on the three, Pete. You're a phenom. Next year, it's three. Are you any relation? Next year, it's the national. Any relation to the famous congressman, former congressman, Bomber Bob Dornan? No. No, because it's Dorman. Oh, it's Dorman. Yeah. Like looking For... into his future. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did that in college. Hey, uh, my friend? Into his month. Yes, sir. Can I tell you something? <laughs> yes, sir. Think about this tonight. Okay. Jerry Seinfeld has only won one Emmy. That's right. And you, Bob Dorman, have won two. Brett Dorman. Mm -hmm. The difference, I guess, being Jerry Seinfeld didn't pay for his. But congratulations anyway. <laughs> and Jerry Seinfeld actually had some competition. Other people in his peer group. <laughs> Can I ask you a question about your desk? Yeah. At your desk, do you have any sort of miniature ball? Like a baseball, ball. a basketball, a football, any type of miniature ball. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How often do you... Hey, Mike, knock it off. I, got little, I have a little football on my desk. <laughs> it's a good stress reliever. How often do you rotate your Emmys? Now that you've got two of them. You could use those Emmys for bookends if only you had some books. <laughs> have, you named, have you named your Emmys? No, no, I haven't named him yet. I'm not that weird. How about Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I reserved that name for you guys. How about, hey, what a good comeback that how, was. How about fake and not real? How, how about, about, how, about how about bought and paid for? Mm, I like that. That's a good one. Are your uh, coworkers equally proud of their Emmys like you, Bob Doorman? I'm sorry, <laughs> Brett Doorman? <laughs> I'm sure they are. Do you take him like to bars? No, no, don't do that. All right, well, listen, you've set us straight. There he is. Emmy you have winner. put us in our place, Brad. <laughs> local Emmy winner, and how wrong we were to speak of the local Emmys in such a bad light, Mike. As Brett has explained to all, to all of us, <laughs> it is a grueling, exhausting process mm -hmm. that really, really separates the cream and, and you see people like Brett rise to the top. Thank you, noted idiot Brett. We've got a break now. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for letting me have a nice car ride. <laughs> okay, Brett. You're welcome. That's yeah, my time. Okay, take care, Brett. Bye bye. I'll, I'll keep oh. listening now. Oh, hey, Brett? Yeah. Blow me. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, uh, Emmy. That was fun. Uh, Emmy. I got, uh, Emmy. Uh, Emmy. I got uh, Emmy. A uh, award. Uh, we, we got we got a break. We we still have got to Lisa and Charlie thing. Hold, hold on, please. Uh, Emmy. Emmy winner Charlie Broyhill coming up. <laughs> right is the Don and Mike Show. And in my club, I was blessed 
the pot whenever the f I please. The Don and Mike Show. Do you have any idea how much therapy you people need? God damn it. The Don and Mike Show. Alice. I'll just talk about the local Emmys. Yeah. Joining us now. Emmy winner, and as I mentioned, I said I said it before we have him on. I'll say it now. I love the fact he didn't go. He never goes. George Michael. Hey George. John and Mike, this is dangerous for my career. <laughs> hey George, it's been too long. How are you? And John Geronimo, you were, I remember you before you became a star. Mike O'Mara. Well, I used to see you at AU. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we go back a long way. Now George, I'm um, I'm watching you. Well, before I tell you about watching you. Let me tell you, congratulations on the Emmy. Thank you. Uh, I know that, and tell me if I'm putting words in your mouth, George. It's bogus because you have to nominate yourself for an award, and I know that you probably don't want any award that you have to nominate yourself for. I didn't do it, but um, uh, someone else did, which I appreciate. That was very flattering. And uh, I, re I respect the Emmys. I, I, I respect them. I, I really do. And, and it's unfortunate that someone made a big deal about the fact that I'm not there because I simply don't go. But, but George, isn't the whole thing, and I understand, you, you, you know, you got friends in the industry and, and everything, but isn't the whole thing kind of jive that you have to nominate yourself? Well, in fact, Don, uh, other people within your organization can nominate you. And that's what happened here. The truth is that... Uh, uh, Wally Bruckner's won them. I've won them. Pat Lackman, the writer. You know, guys know Pat. She's been writing this since she was at ABC. Lady Lackman. Uh, Lady Lackman. <laughs> <laughs> what God, what, what is it? What, the, what she didn't have, what God didn't give her, she doesn't need. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> That's out of my book of the, the ten most erotic things to say to a woman you want to keep happy. <laughs> moving right along, yes. which I know you guys can relate to. <laughs> the fact is that Jeff Greenberg, the producer, another AU guy, and Lackman from Villanova, they both get Emmys for, because it was for best sports cast, which was really great. That means the best writing, best production, and the talent, you know, he did what he did. The fact is, guys, the Emmys, the only way they can do it is the way they do, and that is to have people within the organization nominate, and then other people judge it, and it becomes a winner or, or not. But, George, why wouldn't it be like back when, when you were a DJ, in the, for instance, the Billboard Awards, that there would be a panel of guys, a panel of radio, quote-unquote, experts, who would say, we've listened to a bunch of uh, radio around the country, and these are the guys that we think deserve to be nominated. The guys that were nominated, I mean, I won a couple of those awards and never sent in my own tape saying, please nominate me. And I know you, you won tons of DJ awards, right? I won the Billboard uh, Major Market Disc Jockey a couple of times. It's a nice award. It makes you feel very good yeah. uh, to think that people like, uh, I'm going to throw out a few names, but legends like Jay Cook and Dick Biondi would put your name in for you to be a winner. Right, and I felt, and I felt the same way, but I didn't nominate myself. And, and I understand your point that you didn't nominate yourself. Somebody else at Channel 4 right. nominated you. But if, but if it really came down to them coming to you and saying, George, do you want to be nominated, what would you say? Oh, I'd say, no, thank you. I, See? I, mm -hmm. That's you what know. a pro says. Uh, you know, guys. Have you ever gotten nominated uh, with the National Emmy for the Sports Machine? I w we won quite a few. Like, yeah. won as a writer, and yeah. I won um, as best host uh, the National Emmy. And that doesn't work the same way, does no. it? No. I, in fact, I don't even know how that works. I got a call. Asking if I could be in New York on such and such a day, and I said, "For what?" And they said, well, "You've been nominated for the National Emmys." Wow! Uh, so the, I mean, that that was very nice, and and I must tell you that to win it is is very humbling, and because there are so many people that go into making it work. But you know, don't knock the Emmys. I, I think that it's a way to acknowledge and recognize people who have done good work. Well, all right. I'll, I'll try to take your advice. You know what? I have a we're hard just, time. We're, we're just jealous. I have a hard time. I'm not, I don't care. Not even. I want an award. Damn it! I've been doing this for 19 years. I want an award. What have you won so far, Mike? I uh, won um, uh, the Bobby Both Poe. Both suspended and still come back to work again? No, it was actually Bobby Poe, the major market air personality of the year, and I was very happy with Bobby Poe. Bobby Poe's good. Yeah, Bobby Poe's a nice award. I never won a billboard, but uh, you know, and watching. I have. And I watching won. Tony in magazine. I won small market, medium market and a large market billboard. Well, good for you. Uh, yeah, right. they, but, they, but they matter not. Right. I mean, and George, my whole point was... And of course, that, I forgot to mention the fact that I won a Tony. 
You see, uh, <laughs> you see Channel 5 uh, on their news running these promos saying, thank you for watching Channel 5, the station that won the most Emmys. Well, they won the most Emmys because they nominated them themselves. <laughs> the most. George, I'll ask you one question just to kind of clear this up. Though. It, it depends on the organization, right? And the organization that gets in there and plugs and, and, and hustles the most for their people can get their people nominated and hopefully get their people the most Emmys, right? That's how you get the most nominations. If we would have put, I'll make it real simple. If everybody in my department in sports, if they all would have submitted their best work, then we would have gotten a lot, you know, a lot of nominations, I would hope. All right. But we don't do it. We, we don't right. do it. I'm because not you're gonna, pros. Because you're pros. Well, I'm, we're just not going to spend the money. But, you know, don't. Please, don't knock the Emmys. I think they've done a tremendous job well, of trying to recognize good work in television, and that's what it's about. It's Ever a special year. It's going to be a very special year. Also, George, I'll give you the heads up when the Red Sox go to the World Series this year. <laughs> you are on drugs once again. <laughs> hey, uh, George, it, you, hey you, guys, yeah. let me leave you with this thought. Have you contacted the French Embassy to get a formal apology for the booing to Serena Williams? Oh, yeah. You know what? Um, here's where I stand on that, George. I'm not... I'm not opposed to that. I think she should just suck it up and say in the press afterwards, hey, I had a bad game. I got beaten. No, no. No, no. She got booed unreasonably because she's an American. That well, sucks. F the French. Um, George, one last, let me leave you with something. Yes, Don. I'm watching you the other night on Channel 4, as everybody does, and Grady... You know, Jim Vance, I'm going to call him Grady. He looks like Grady from Sanford and Son with all the gray now coming in. He will not let you get a word in. And I, I, I like him being a part of the newscast. But here's the thing. For whatever reason, he's rooting through New Jersey. Yeah. And, and George is going through the highlights. Mm -hmm. This is before game three and saying, you know, San Antonio is the team to beat. And meanwhile, you got Vance who's just sitting there saying, well, I said, I think it's New Jersey. And George finally says, I'm going to have to take away your speaking privilege. <laughs> but the thing is, George, they don't really do it. And what I want to know is, when are you going to have enough tenure there when you're going to say, I want Jim Vance's speaking privileges taken away <laughs> during the news, and they're really going to do it? The same day that you say, I want Michael Mara's uh, speaking privileges taken away. So it's that kind of deal. Gotcha. I think I understand. All right. Gotcha. Anyway. We are an inseparable team. You are. It just sometimes, you know, I mean, let's face it. You're right about the Spurs. <laughs> I'm right, and he's wrong. That's a sentimental choice, guys. I want to tell you, the Nets are the team of the future if they can keep Jason Kidd. But I really believe, I, I just would love to see this for David Robinson and for the classic guys on the Spurs. They're a very unique group of individuals in a sport which basically is run with prima donnas and out of control, maniacal, uh, ego maniacal individuals. The Spurs are truly a team. All right, the last question. Tonight when you go on uh, Channel 4, are, are you going to turn to Vance? Are you going to turn to Grady and say, hey, well, what happened to your Nets? <laughs> You've already read my <laughs> Emmy winner George Michael. Yeah. Thank you, George. George. Gentlemen, always a pleasure with Don and Mike. There goes that career. Thank you, George. Bye, George. Bye, bye. Because you're Checking in from Leisure World. I like George. We, you know, we poke fun at George yeah. about a bunch of stuff, but he is a good guy. Hello, Don and Mike. Big friend of the show. Hello, hey, Don and Mike. Very true. Hi. Hi there, uh, George Michaels, the big sports expert. Didn't mention that Serena Williams was mocking the French and made a joke about them surrendering, so that's why they were booing her. <laughs> oh, she did more power to her. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's great. All right. Thank you, my friend. No, no. no thank you. Oh, then I stay corrected, too. <laughs> All right. Listen, uh, you're going to have to listen tomorrow to hear the Charlie and Lisa. Oh, yeah. You are disappointing legions of Charlie fans who will have to wait till tomorrow. Well, we got to get to the news now. I understand that, Don. And uh, <laughs> we've also not heard... Cheryl, the Big Dykes report from the Gay Pride oh, Parade. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff we're going to uh, kick over to tomorrow. Hey, Don and Mike, we're going to do it like they do it on the Discovery Channel. It's so festive. It's cleared up. It's not raining. And we're so happy and queer to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, the Big Dykes at the Gay Pride Parade. We have uh, 
all of her takes from that. And we've got uh, Charlie and Lisa's thing from uh, from Lisa's uh, shower. Very and, good, uh, Geronimo. And uh, tomorrow, <laughs> I, all, all, all Mira. Uh, tomorrow, you know, I won't have my baggage. You won't have your baggage. And, well, yeah. <laughs> you try not to have your baggage. I'll try not. I'll, I'll leave mine at the station. You I'll try not to. We'll, we'll come in tomorrow and... Uh, We'll do like a regular show starting at 3. Yes. <laughs> what? Why were you looking off wistfully? Because <laughs> I was thinking. When you say that, you get me thinking about all my stuff again. Oh, my God. <laughs> I did. <laughs> that did it. Sorry. Thinking about my thing. Your thing. Yeah. That little thing I was telling you about. And when Mike says his thing, yeah. he needs his penis. I know. Which I think about wistfully. Oh, how? Oh, how? Don't forget tomorrow also the break about Baltimore. Yeah. We have to tape an entire segment so they can use it on HBO's The Wire. Are we going to be ourselves? I, I think we should. I really do. I mean, uh, otherwise they're not going to use it. Right. right exactly. It's going to be, well, the way it was explained to me, the scene where these guys are sitting in the car, they're on a stakeout. Get the bad guys. And one of them actually says, you know, let's turn on Don and Mike. Really? So it's like we're going to get a minute or so of cool. radio time on HBO. That's cool. Hello, Baltimore. How's it yeah. going? Yeah. In a world where only the, the radio back. was strictly forbidden, the one city. man found a way to bring good news to his What's people. What's up, Bimor? He made it up. Time for an ice cold Natty Bow. Buzz, what is your lead story on the news and comments today? Today, so much Hillary, you'd think she's running for something. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, you know, and I've avoided that topic today because I know you have it on the news. Now's your chance. Oh, brother, Jesus Christ! You know, can you blame Bubba? Can you blame him? <laughs> Watching her last night, just oh, Jesus Christ! I could wring his neck. Really? Is that prim and proper? Is that the best you can give us? She's acting presidential. I could ring his neck. Stay tuned for news and comment Jesus. coming up on the Don and Mike Show. He he like number three all over Monica. Mm -hmm. She's acting presidential, and he's just saying, "Bobby, just just use your hand." <laughs> uh, that, that was all very uh, professional. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show. What's the word from Planet Crespa? The Don and Mike Show. If you please, their show is filled with blood and cheese. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Neill. I don't believe what I just heard. It's not a national spot. Oh, yeah, right. Hold on a second. Whenever we play something that's got a little bit of soul to it. Tell them if Stabian's not here in 20 minutes, you die. Um, we just ran a commercial on our flagship station on WGFK. Mm -hmm. The Secret Service. Wow, cool. That they're looking for people. Spies. I'm ready. <laughs> it's a funny concept. <laughs> yeah. The Secret Service is looking for recruits, and they're running commercials on our show. That's cool. Homeland Security. But you know what? I think the people that listen to this show have the right stuff. It doesn't make me feel good about our country. We have that's Emmy what, winners. That's what they want you to think. <laughs> well, what about what about the guy that won an uh, Emmy? Right. He could be an agent. Yeah. Um, and, I've always wanted to be. I've always wanted to have that little thing in my ear and run around and wear sunglasses and a dark suit. Anyway, who, who am I to say? You know, a spot is a spot. And, and thank you, uh, Secret Service, for buying time. <laughs> Mike, uh, don't forget, just hours now. I'm proud to announce this. Again, just for those of you listening on WJFK, mm -hmm. Mike and I are very jealous of the deal Ron and Fez have. Yes. We have agreed now in principle, Mike and I will work every morning from 5 until 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. Yes, for that uh, very important 5 to 6 a.m. hour, and yeah. then we will be back uh, with our regular slot at 3 o'clock. 3 to we're, 7. We're doing that for the good of the company. Yes, we are. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to see how tired they are when they come in. <laughs> They'll be fine. We're going to get up and work 5 to 6 a.m., mm -hmm. then go home with just enough time to start to relax, then come back and do our regular 7, excuse me, 3 to 7 show. Mm -hmm. Right. I was thinking for a minute. All, all for you. That's right. nice. Does. Okay. It was a joke, everybody. <laughs> I know some people are actually going to think, uh, <laughs> hey, how about that? I've been waiting. My, my, my commute starts at 5 a.m. And you know what Rob was telling me? What? At least he's got to say, we don't have time for it today. Like everything on the show, <laughs> we didn't have time for it today. 
But on, on Friday, when we weren't here because of our graduation, one of the segments you ran was uh, oh, yeah. the jumper uh, on the bridge. Yeah, it was like maybe God, a long time ago, like three years ago, there was a jumper on the American Legion. I remember bridge. that day. We got uh, a call from our, um, here abruptly at our, our traffic center saying, please run a disclaimer, tell people this is uh, a recap. Metro traffic control was flooded with calls. Oh, cool. <laughs> it was people who thought it was really happening. Yeah, I guess that best of thing at the beginning doesn't you know, work for some people. I don't listen much or well. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was funny. And Lisa's got a, uh, somewhere she's got a voicemail with some guy that was irate. Wow. It, what was it? He got a speeding ticket? No, he, <laughs> he did a huge long detour and he wants us to pay for the extra gas. <laughs> oh, my no, anyway. God. You'll hear it tomorrow. We'll play it tomorrow. <laughs> Plus, tomorrow we've got the, the gay pride tapes. Right. We've got Lisa and Charlie's uh, wedding quiz. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> so much. Uh, buzz and news brought to you by Viramax. Sexual pleasure nice. and performance enhancer. Someone call for a doctor? It's doctor developed, clinically tested. Viramax works. Get it at Rite Aid, GNC, and other select retailers. Try it today. Viramax, one triple eight. Try VMAX. Now, here he is. Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. You would think people were waiting in line to buy hot concert tickets, uh, waiting in line with their wristbands, but no, they were waiting for Hillary Clinton to autograph her new book. Click. Barnes & Noble says it will be their top-selling non-fiction book of the year. A million copies have br been printed so far. That's a lot for click, a book click, these click, days. Click, click, The book went on sale today. The former first lady is getting $8 million for it. Now she's at book signings and on TV, ABC, NBC, CNN. And despite the Hillary mania, she says she has no intention to run for president. It may be for the best. 53% of us don't want her to run. 44% of us like her, but 48% of us don't like her. See? But A&E wants to make See? a made-for-TV movie out oh, of the book. I heard this. Now, this will make you vomit. What, the casting? Yeah. Mike, Mike guess who? Would play Hillary? Have you heard? Is she... No, I have not. Yes. Hillary I'm going to tell, tell you right now. Set the bar way high. You have to suspend disbelief. When so you hear the actress. Also, uh, young or old actress? Uh, in between. Mm -hmm. Good actress or bad actress? In between. But very hot. A hottie? Yeah. Um... I mean, it's impossible to, to put you on the spot. Just Gladys Knight. <laughs> Buzz, it is? Well, it's not Sharon Stone. They wanted to talk to Sharon that's... Stone about the role. Sharon Stone not interested, so they've, they've had to move Sharon on. Stone. See, Sharon Stone? That's what I heard on MSNBC today, Stone. that it was Sharon Stone. I saw. Who's going to put on the makeup? They had... They'll have, to, they'll have to put her in, like, alien makeup. They had a split screen with Sharon Stone on one side yeah. and Hillary on the other. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking... And they were thinking... Hillary must be so flattered. They were saying, yeah, Hillary I would think so. Flattered. I'm like, what planet are they from? Sharon Stone. Sharon Stone says she's not interested. So now they may be talking with Kim Cattrall from Sex and the City. <laughs> what are they thinking? That's just as bad. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. hello, McFly, Bulletin. <laughs> Both those girls are hot. Yeah, Brett Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> Roseanne. Roseanne. That's really? the other yeah. side, though. That's, I like Definitely Brett Butler. Going too far. We like Roseanne <laughs> after some lipo. <laughs> you get serious. You get that serious. I am, I'm face. serious. Roseanne. Roseanne after some lipo. Right. Campaigning Bell, for Now, now, <laughs> I could wring your neck. <laughs> I was mad. Good news and bad news about HBO's The Sopranos. Mostly bad news. We haven't seen a new episode since December, and word is... We won't see any new episodes this calendar year either. None. We hear February, maybe March of next year. It's all right. The lost, lost interest. Yeah, I have to. Count, count, me, count me disinterested. That's what I was going to say. The good news, perhaps, is that there may be more than the usual 13 episodes when the show does return, if anyone is still interested by then. There's a show that's coming on on Showtime. It's a relationship show. It looks pretty Out good. Out of order. Out I have of order? Seen it. it is incredible. Is it's it really? It's a great show. You know, I'm, I'm, that's the show. one I want to watch, and it's on Showtime. It's already it's on? Fantastic. Great story. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll repeat the pilot. Uh, All right. Great story. Is that the thing with William Mason? Great nudity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, really, really good cast yeah. and lots of sex. Killer show. Yep. 
Um, anyway, about The Sopranos, uh, creator David Chase was expecting to wrap up the series with a story arc in the upcoming fifth year, but now he says he's not sure he can squeeze it all into 13 episodes. Filming got off to a late and rough start this year because of the holdout of star James Gandolfini. Oh, come on. <laughs> but quoting Chase, now it's going real well. Are they here to get Sharon Stone to play Hillary? What are you, gay? <laughs> AJ needs Rogaine. <laughs> AJ's losing his hair. He's, wow. he's so old. Oh, that's that's an aging joke. So much time has gone. <laughs> we were doing that before with George. <laughs> hey, you know who would be good though is Hillary, and I mean this seriously, yeah. Kathy Bates. You'd have to get her to lose a couple of pounds. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but hey, that's that's no small task. Well, you get her on the. You're lipo. making her too fat. You're making Hillary too fat. Get her on mm. the lipo. All right, here's the here's another one. What about Ellen DeGenitals? To play Hillary? Yeah. Too goofy. Yeah, too like bird like. <laughs> okay, well you you give her that Mrs. Doubtfire stuff so that right. like hey. her ankles get real big like Hillary's. Ah. Here we go. Here we go. You know really? Okay, mm. come on. I'm I'm not joking either. Then why are you laughing? Because <laughs> you're gonna laugh. Yeah. Erica Slezak. Yes. Vicky. Mm. From one life to live. Couldn't Vicky do it? I hate to say this. She's too pretty. <laughs> oh, wow. You never no. thought you'd say that. She's no too pretty. Way. I want to oh, I want to write down and I can't say this because it'll hurt somebody's feelings. We don't want to do but that. But I swear on my kid's life that I think this really is the person who looks <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't you think? There's yeah. a similarity. If Absolutely. she cut her hair? Yep, yep. Absolutely. Someone who works here. That would work. Yeah. Someone who works. Show me breasts! <laughs> yes! Someone who works here. What? Someone, who, oh. someone who works here. And incidentally, uh, happy uh, BYD TW, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Happy, happy bring your dog to work. <laughs> Today is bring your dog to work. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know I would have brought a dog. Yeah. Well, right now, there's a lot of Hillary. Somebody who works here. Mm -hmm. Oh, heck, I'll say it. Mm -hmm. I love her, Miss Bobby. Yeah, yeah, I know. She loves you. She brings her dog in all the time. Yeah. But it's nuts. Mm -hmm. It's just nuts. You come down the, down the hallway, and there's a big dog coming down. It's a sweet dog. Giving yeah. you big, slurpy dog kisses. Yeah, very friendly dog. It's weird. <laughs> right now, there's a lot of Hillary, but that'll change as summer Bobby, progresses. Put that dog in a box. As summer progresses, I don't mean like put it down. I mean like bring a kennel in. Oh, like, like right? Yeah. yeah. Put it in a box. Oh, let it run free. There's always that chance that it might, uh, you know, go number two in Allen's office. But it never does. It never does. That's the problem. Because it's not well trained. It's never a payoff with that dog. It's just you know? a sweet, mutt dog. I'd like to see that dog make a little dog do. Wouldn't that mm -hmm. be great? Oh, wouldn't that be fun? What is that? Dog urine everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Remind us, remind us of Weva. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> that's no dog. <laughs> well, there's a lot of Hillary now, but that'll change as the summer progresses with the release of the new Terminator movie. After that, we'll find out if Arnold Schwarzenegger is running for governor of California. I want to answer to governor because I say it's good for, you know, Yay. the people to see the Terminator and then elect me to the governor's mansion. Now, uh, this is maybe... You got a uh, question? This is, this is maybe... Yay. Yeah. Just something to think about. Mm -hmm. When Bart and I were in the uh, audience of uh, Too Fast, Too Furious. Yeah, that's a good movie. Not, not as good as Terminator. And, and that movie made like, what, 50 million bucks this weekend? Oh, it was crazy. It's yeah. going to be yeah. a, a paltry sum when you consider what I'm going to make. <laughs> My movie will make hundreds of millions of dollars this weekend. 52 million. It was full of kids. Theater's yeah. full of kids. Sure. Yes, I like I was, the kids. The kids like Terminator. I was, as always, old and pathetic <laughs> in this theater. <laughs> When Arnold came on... Did you go with your son? Yeah. Yeah. And when Arnold started speaking in the trailer, uh -huh. and especially when he said, She'll be back. She'll be back, Sir Connor. People were laughing. Mm -hmm, of course. And they weren't laughing in that way, like, Oh, uh, yeah, that's a catchphrase we've heard before. I don't understand. They were laughing in that... You're saying they were mocking me? That sarcastic way. I yeah. predict my film would make 110 million marks. <laughs> <laughs> Deutsch. Well, Mom. Thanks. You gonna come and see it, Buzz? Oh, I'll be there. Good. Absolutely. Sure. Why and not? Why not have a good time? After the release, I'm in the scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, to ask.
After the release of the Terminator this summer, uh, we'll find out if Arnold's going to run for governor of California in 2006 or sooner. Of course I will. I will run for governor because I did demand to have a guy that's in touch with the people who can speak the language. <laughs> well, as I told you before, he still has to check with his wife, but expect him to run. He told Esquire, if the state needs me and if there's no one I think is better, then I will me, run. Are you kidding me, Maria? She's a skeleton. He has also hired a political advisor. I have. At the taping of the Stunt Awards, which air tonight on the USA Network. Yeah, that's the best guys that uh, set themselves on the fire mm -hmm. and jump from the tall buildings. I bet there's a guy out there somewhere who has won a Stunt Award. A Stunt too. Award, yeah. That'd yeah. be great. Like that Emmy winner. He was a smart guy. Well, Arnold says, a, Arnold says a stunt is a slowly controlled crash like the California state budget. You'll ah. hear him say that on the show tonight. Yeah, it's like the California state budget. That's my joke. <laughs> so, are you ready to vote? <laughs> vote for me. Arnold in the governor's mansion. More, more great, great quotes. I'm the kind of person who stays on message. Right now, the message is after school programs. After that, the message is go see Terminator 3. After that, I can talk about the other message. That's right, which will be vote for Arnold. <laughs> we got a break. I right. says yay. <laughs> we will be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Oh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. They talk too much. Don and Mike. If you folks on the network, you're missing the real show. Mm -hmm. Would you miss our fabulous live reads? They're special sometimes for our live commercials. Right. Um, now here's Buzz Gurley. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. In Minnesota, St. Paul police are talking to Jesse Ventura. <laughs> Seems he had a run-in recently with a protester outside the TV studio where he's still rehearsing his upcoming MSNBC talk show. I'm the effing governor. <laughs> Not anymore, actually. I know, but I always will be. Yes. Buzz Burbank. Governor Ventura. Smart guy. <laughs> this, uh, this protester, an environmental activist, was upset about Jesse's use of the studio. Fag. The the protester filed a police report saying that Jesse threatened him. I'll break your butt. And then grabbed one of his signs and tried to destroy it. How'd you like me to take your bag? I'll pull, I'll pull on your bag. Hey, dude, back off now. I ain't gonna back off. You know what I ain't? I ain't too, uh, what is that line? Too proud to beg? To bleed. Uh, uh, ain't got time to bleed. I ain't got time to bleed. That's what it is. Ain't got time to bleed. I want an A. I want an Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> Local police and prosecutors are looking into it, but they say they don't expect to file any charges. I'm going to hit him over the head with a northern pike. <laughs> That's a big ass fish. Yes, it is. That dude is beating me with a fish, man. <laughs> That's right. And then I'll pry its mouth open and put your bag in its mouth and close it so its teeth bite your bag. I'm going to have to beat him off with a fish. Cool. <laughs> You, dude. Now we're talking. <laughs> and while Jesse continues to rehearse, Chuck Woolery is ready for his upcoming reality show on the Game Show Network. There you go. He's the man. The show is called <laughs> Naturally Stoned. It's named after a song Chuck Woolery and his band performed in 1968. Joe. Talk about a cult following. The show, stoned. the show will mix footage of Chuck working on his Game Show Network program called Lingo and... Joe. Scenes of Chuck and his family on a ski trip. But was that? A, what does that have to do with being stoned? I, nothing. You know what, what it is? I'm sure it's one of those like uh, up with people songs where he was naturally high. Yeah. Joe. Sort of. If you want some friendly advice, a haircut and take a bath. You wouldn't get hassled so much. Joe's not just a name; it's an idea. Fathers expect more from a kid named Joe. 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 Well, you have Joe. Chuck and his band, Avant Garde, actually recorded and released that song, Naturally Stoned, back in 1968, and that's what he's decided to call his show. His band is Avant Garde. Avant Garde, yes. Uh, quoting, quoting Chuck, I think if it's done as biography meets Comedy Central, it might have a shot. The show will air Sunday nights this summer. Right. It's taken nearly two months, but Luther Vandross appears to be coming out of his coma. All right, here he is now. Let's go live. The Luther's, uh, uh, Hospital room? Yes, please. Turn on the satellite. He's stirring. He's doing better. Oh, thank God. 
No, no, no I'm look kidding. at that. Those, those tanks are not funny. That's that's not funny. The singer was found on. Seriously. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's funny. Here's, here's Luther Vandross. Okay, good. You judge for yourself. Moses is probably my favorite character in the Bible. He has weaknesses and strength. I wish he could. And I that's could. what I like in a character. Oh. I wish I could say he's doing that well. Uh, the singer was found on his apartment floor back in mid-April. He cannot sing again yet. He still cannot even speak. But he can shake his head yes or no. Yay. This awareness returned about a week ago, but he's still not totally uh, conscious. No, negative. What? He said, Luther, how you doing? Green is good. I mean, <laughs> he was so charming the way he said it with the hair slicked back. The 52-year-old is still in critical but stable condition in a New York hospital's intensive care unit. He's still in a respirator. No word on when he'll be out of the hospital, but his new album comes out tomorrow. I enjoyed the movie. I thought Spartacus was better, but then I'm prejudiced. In sports, quarterback Brian Greasy has signed with his dad's team. Brian passed his physical today and signed a two-year deal with Miami. He's now second string for the Dolphins behind Jay Fiedler. His dad, Bob Greasy, led Miami to two Super Bowl victories. And finally, crooks are still stupid. They don't. Are you afraid to laugh at those Kirk Douglas tapes? I ain't afraid of nothing. <laughs> to laugh out loud? No. Be not afraid. <laughs> no. Finally, crooks are... I think it'd be very brave if you laughed out loud with the rest of us. No, I think he was very brave yes. to go on, uh, on camera and say that. I don't find anything funny about those tapes. <laughs> Not one little thing. <laughs> this man is lying. <laughs> Finally, crooks are still stupid, and they don't get any smarter behind bars. Dateline, Indiana, Pennsylvania. Now, now, what? Both of you, mm -hmm. Rob, behave. Extraordinarily brave, Mike. I agree, Rob. <laughs> In Indiana, Pennsylvania, a teenaged inmate at a Pennsylvania state prison had to be chiseled out of a toilet after he stuck his hand deeply into it. Hey. The 19-year-old told the guards he didn't believe the other guys when they told him about a previous con who'd gotten his arm stuck in the john a few months earlier. Joe. <laughs> I'm Buzz Burbank on the Don and Mike Show. Hey, dude. Your hand smells like ass. What is wrong with that guy? <laughs> you want to play it one more time? You're looking at Rob like you want to play it one more He's time. He's already put it away. I oh, no, dear. I'm sure he can get it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> He's fast as lightning when he's motivated. Right. Yeah. Hey, dude. This dude today down the cell block put his hand all the way down the toilet. Listen, isn't that right, dude? Spartacus was the most important thing I did in my career. Because Spartacus represented a man who wanted freedom. That's Ruben Stutter, dude. <laughs> All right, take it back. That's Luther Vandross, dude. There it is. Hey, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Oh, okay. Did you say you I were? Did. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Well, then, uh, Wait, it's time to get out of here. See you tomorrow with all the stuff that we didn't get to uh, today. All right, then. If we had done that today, <laughs> I'd have to plan a whole new show for tomorrow. That's right. But now tomorrow's in the bag. <laughs> I wish I was brave enough to laugh out loud. In stack. <laughs> Good day to you, sir. 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 Thank you. And uh, rest me. John, goodbye. We <laughs> have hey. Peter Tim. Till we meet again. This is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging.